This is Bruce Buffer, and this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for the MMA Halls! Mixed Martial A-Holes! MMA Halls, MMA Halls, MMA you like to be a mixed martial a-hole. No way. From the Queen Studios of New York, Cyborg, Dana White, Nightmare to Deer With, UFC Fight Week, Bare Knuckle Boxing Fight Week, MMA News, The Manimal, with the MMA Ho! Wonderful, wonderful ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here, we are live, season 3, episode 31, and you may notice someone in the background over here, Jesse, we have a guest. This is, as most of you may know, Pro Bellator fighter, John, the manimal. Benaduce. Hey, Benaduce. Oh, forget about it. A Benaduce. You, know, oh, you gotta preface that by saying not only the most entertaining fighter in Bellator, <laughs> The most right. entertaining. The most entertaining from start <laughs> to finish. I'm talking about the weigh-ins, coming on the leopard print suit, the hammer to the cage, you know, entertainment, and uh, and also the oldest winning featherweight in oh, Bellator. Well, I'll tell you that wow, the oldest yeah, winning you know, featherweight? Some people think age is a bad thing, but I'm, I'm aging, uh, I wouldn't say gracefully, but... No, more very like, gracefully. It's more like grizzle, like the fat grizzle on a steak. That's how you know. That's how it's aging for me, but it's good. Bellator 222. We very were hairy. Let's see that, drunk <laughs> Hold on, let's, let's see that. Little, there little, he little, is. Oh, yeah. Shit. All right. Wonderful, Listen, wonderful. I'm like the opposite of Samson. I don't have any hair on my head, but my body hair. That's where I get my strength from. <laughs> well, I got to say this. We are honored to have you here on the Casting Couch live on the MMA Holes. I hope you're ready for a wonderful, wonderful night, Mr. Manimal. Wonderful, uh, I'm, wonderful. I'm pretty friggin' excited, let me tell you. And then you're so hot. And uh, Jesse, you're okay, too. Mm, ah. That's true. That's true. But, uh, human. This gotta, is also my uh, my coach. You guys you, saw in that Instagram video. That's this right. Is, this that's is my, right. my new coach. We, Jesse's we, a natural. I'm ready to get Jesse in fight shape. <laughs> Well, although I, although I will say this, Jesse. Yeah. We're gonna have to work a lot on defense because you're way too fucking pretty to get hit. Ah, <laughs> see, I was okay <laughs> first, and now I'm too pretty to get hit. Well, you no, know, I yeah, but that means we got to work it so that you don't get hit. There oh, is showing the the training. There video. is the oh, manimal and Jesse on the mat together, uh, working on that. She actually got her hips out. Look good. at this. Yeah, oh see, my goodness. She actually, Jesse got her hips out good. She she I mean. She's a natural, but also has a you know one of the best coaches in the world. Just showing. Uh, of course, there. couldn't and, ask for a better coach. And I have to say this: Law MMA, a bunch of killers over there, and that's where we ran into you. We did the uh, Longo podcast; it was fantastic. But it, is it really the Longo podcast, or is it the Manimal p- podcast? I think we're it's the other way around, right? I, I mean, I did <laughs> double his listenership, so mm. Ooh. Uh-huh. so I think it's pretty even. <laughs> you know, I think it's pretty even. There so it is. Don't worry, you don't have to. There's no shots fired. Ray's not <laughs> listening to this shit. We can say whatever we want. You know? Yeah, no one's listening, to be honest. But uh, no, I mean, I know Ray is, and Ray don't even listen to our fucking podcast. <laughs> I'm like, because I like to listen to it to make to see how it sounds. You know, to see if there's something I can improve. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, uh, some people don't like to listen or watch like, back their stuff. Once we lay it down, he's done with it. It's just like the fights. Once Ray's done with it, he's done with it. Well, something he moves on. Next thing. Something tells <laughs> me, me I like to reevaluate it for months and years. <laughs> Well, here you are, Mr. Manimal. You are... That's me being grateful. Look so at grateful. this. Humble. I'm now, tell me about this ex- experience Look at that. Here. When I took the fucking hammer of Thor Mjolnir inside Madison Square Garden on my wife's birthday, there's nothing that felt better than that. You ever watch Highlander when he chops the guy's head off and he gets the power of the quickening? Oh, my God. Wow. That's what it's like when you win at the Garden. Look at that shit. That is unbelievable. And I was fighting number 10, so there was like 20, 21,000 people. It was packed. 
Yeah, they, that was the uh, Rory McDonald was fighting on that card. Yeah, uh, Rory you had Gracie. McDonald, Neiman Gracie. Yeah. Uh, that was insane, and and you yeah, got you to better, fight. If you're looking through my fucking Instagram. high quality. There we go. We're back. All right, we're back in business. The uh, right. the the manimal has crashed our our uh, our stream. He's so powerful with the the, the hammer that he uh, owned my likeness. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bell oh, I don't think they know. care that much about me, but thank you. <laughs> oh, you know what I found the other day? Someone sent me. Someone made a, a Twitter fan page for me. Really? I, and they were like, is this you? I was like, no, it's his fan account. I was like, I have a fan. Like two of them. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> they must really like hairy dudes. What do the gay guys call me? A muscle bear? They must really like A that. muscle bear? A bear, yeah. I think a muscle bear. I'm a bear, but I'm jacked. I like the, the gay I'm guys jacked. call you a muscle bear. Muscle bear, that's, that's the interesting. Term. Yeah. Hmm. I've never heard that before. So we have all different terms. On you know, the casting every different couch. Type of guy. You know, they, they really objectify the male species. <laughs> 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 Let me know in the chat. This guy ate Matt Sarah. No, he did not, King K. What are you talking about? We got a donation coming in. This is from Vinny the Chin. We got a donation. Out by Zano. Thoughts on Colby Chaos v Marty Snoozman. Thoughts on that Irish coon James is Galaja. Easy ducking you and only fighting twinks. Oh, how about that? James Gallagher wants to know if, if he's ducking you. Hmm. James Gallagher, is he uh, 45? Or? He bounces around he from bounces way to way, around. yeah. That'd be a good fight for me. Right, That'd Gallagher, be an fight. You Why know, not? He, he likes the ground. He has some good stand-up. I like that fight. I wish Dylan Dennis wasn't such a fat fuck. <laughs> if he was a little lighter, that'd you would be a fight great Dylan fight. Dennis? That'd be a great fight for what me. What would you do? Who's he fight that's not a white belt? Tell mm. me that. Mm. The night I fought, the guy he fought is a white belt in jujitsu. Yeah. You know, even the guy I fought was good at jujitsu. You know, now, they, they feed him white belts. I wish he was a little lighter. You know, I think that'd be a great fight for me. That would be fun to watch, yeah. right? Yeah, what is your dream? What's your dream Bellator fight? Um. If Bellator went to Japan, that'd be great. I don't care who it'd be against. So you don't but. you don't care about the opponent? You just no. I just need to. I just. I mean, really, they should just give me an opponent that, that you know, you want to see an entertaining fight. Yeah, of course. So give me a guy that'll be entertaining to fight. Sure. You know, so a fight with Dana since he's a grappler. If he was lighter, that'd be entertaining. Gallup would be an entertaining fight too because he does like to grapple. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be fun watching yeah. them two roll on the ground. If you can give a, a backstory to how you got into mixed martial arts, what is your background, and uh, where did, how did it lead you to this casting couch? Oh, shit. Well, uh, you guys picked me up on the corner. They gave me like 50 bucks <laughs> and a free beer to fight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then I was, then I came to the gangbang and that was fun. I performed better than I looked. That was a lot of fun. So that was fun. Yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, how did I get into fighting? Well, you know, I used to be fat. So I used to be like 265 pounds until I was in college. And uh, I don't know if you know my friend Philip Nova. He was on like season eight of The Ultimate Fighter. Okay. So I knew him from my neighborhood. And one day we were talking and he said something about kicking my ass. And he was like a 140 pound kid. And I was like, I'll kick your ass right now, you little fuck. <laughs> so, uh, so he was like, no, come to my, uh, where I train martial arts. And he freaking set me up. He was like, tell the instructor you want to spar. I'm like, all right. So I go and I was kind of a knuckle. I was like, oh, I want to spar. He's like, oh, you train? I was like, no, I just fight in the street, you know? And he was like, what a dick. <laughs> so uh, so my first night, dude, it was like three days a week, a two and a half hour class. So the first night I train, I, uh, I, it's like a half hour jump rope. Then it's like a half hour conditioning. Then you spar stand up. And I'm getting my ass kicked. I don't know shit, right? I'm just getting beat up all over the place. And uh, then after like 45 minutes of sparring, they're like, now we'll do jujitsu. And uh, Philippe triangles me. He arm bars me. And I don't know how, I catch up in a guillotine and choke the third roll. Oh, wow. That's and the instructor's crazy. like, what the hell did you do that from? I was like, I don't know. I watch a lot of UFCs. <laughs> <He was like, laughs> That's what you told me. I just watch UFC. Yeah, I was like, I watch a lot of UFCs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because this was 90, 2000. This was 99 or 2000. I forget exact. It was right around then, either late 99 or early 2000. Huh. And he was like, all right. So I'm in the bathroom throwing up. They're trying to close the freaking gym. I'm like dying back there. And finally, I'm ready to walk out. He's like, what do you want to do? He's like, you suck, you're fat. I was like, you know, I don't know. This is kind of fun. I think maybe I want to be a pro fighter. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I want to be a pro. That's crazy. Yeah. Just like, he was like, you it. suck. And uh, I was like, yeah, but I'll get better. It's not going to get worse than today. And um, <laughs> I mean, because I did the hardest day. Listen, Jesse, imagine if you were like, I want to fight. Right. And we just made you spar at one of the girls, get punched in the face, break your nose, throw up, arm bar you, choke you. For two and a half hours. Right. 
And then you were like, yeah, I want to fight. I think that was fun. So I'm already psycho. And then four years later, I turned pro in 2003. And I'm, in, I'm ready to walk out. I was like, see, I told you I was going to be a pro fighter. The motherfucker's like, yo, just fight. I can't even deal with you right now. It's like, just just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but, but I'm more of an adventurer. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I like to fight, but my fights have been all over the place. Like, I'm a, I, I'm a world champion in jiu-jitsu. I'm a stick fighting champion, knife fighting. I did Kung Fu. Like, I like all the martial arts. But fighting MMA is is a lot of fun. It's just the most work. But tell me about this knife fighting. Uh, I, I want to hear about I'm, this. I'm an instructor in Jeet Kune Do. And that's, uh, you get a, like a padded knife or a shock knife. Okay. And then you get points, kind of like uh, fencing. Oh, oh shit. So, I want to do that. So you wear like it's the fun. suit and everything? No, no, no. No suit. Just so how do you get the points? I just fucking hit you with it. Yeah. And it's like a referee. Huh? Oh, you, get you have a knife. referee. Yeah. Oh, okay. he, point. He'll judge the point. Ah. Yeah. Damn. So that was fun, and then the stick fight. The stick fighting, you wear armor because you, because you, I mean, beat the crap out of each other with the sticks. Yeah, you have just like two wooden sticks, and you just even with the armor, you get black and blues everywhere. That's interesting. Have you ever had to use like the knife fighting uh, to your advantage in, in the streets or anything like that? Have you ever Dude, been approached in Brooklyn? Right? Listen, so that, listen, I can't really talk about that. Oh, come if on. You go, listen, if you go to war. And you kill someone, you're a hero. Oh. So you can't talk about that in the hood, though. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. I just, uh, so, but listen, I've had to a couple times. Uh, wow. Luckily, luckily, not that much. Mm. So, But I, I've had to, yeah. Sure, it works It works out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're with John Emanuel Beneduce. He is I'm a Bellator alive, fighter. Surprisingly. <laughs> Law MMA in the house, and it's a pleasure to have combat you here. Combat arm wrestling. Oh, that's funny. You ever see that? X-arm combat arm wrestling? Oh, no. It's the stupidest shit ever. They just... They arm wrestle, but you could punch each other. So oh, then they, they no. have their arms tied together I've and they start beating yeah, them. And I've you can throw it. kicks. So if you're flexible, you can throw a kick over it. And they're standing by like this like tiny little they table. They have a table. Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, a yeah. Oh, I've my it. God. Yeah, it's like I, I was watching a clip on it on social media like not too long ago. And they were like brutally beating the fuck out of each oh, other. Like, God, we got to commentate that. That's what we got to get into. Fuck Triton I mean, fights. We got to go to combat arm wrestling. That's what we combat need. Combat arm wrestling. Where can we X find us? You know what we wanted to do? Me and my friend Ed. Is he on? Uh, he's not on yet. He would have appreciated this. Me and my friend Eddie used to want to do something called two feet. Mm -hmm. Where you tie the guy's two feet together. <laughs> so no, I tie my foot to your front foot. Oh my God. I know. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> sounds great. It sounds great. <laughs> but you can't get away from the guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I, I want to do all this stuff. This is actually sounds like a lot of fun. Everything sounds ridiculous. It sounds like if you have a couple of drinks, anything could be uh, a, a competition, right? It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Well, I anyway. want to bring the stick fighting back, really. Yeah. And we used to do grappling with it, too. But Wait, grappling little, with sticks? Oh, my God. It was insane. You know, so, so you're <laughs> asking me when work? I get in the cage, I'm like, well, we don't have weapons. So <laughs> it's not as crazy as stick grappling was. We have uh, Law MMA donating. I'm sure it's them, right? Yeah. JBH, what's your excuse after listening to that story from a former fat body filled with grandma's lasagna and Gino's fucking pizzas as his training meals? Stop talking that shit or do it. Now you have no more excuses, Wait. white girl. Wait. Hashtag what? law MMA. Wait, where's the excuse? I, I don't you know. You guys saw the video. I, I'm i in it now. I'm, in fact, we were just talking before the show of when oh. I'm going to be going back. This is my coach, guys. This is, this is <laughs> the, the coach. Hold on. Can we back up? Where's Gino's Pizza? There it's, is on a, it's on It's uh, on. No, I mean, why isn't it here? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's phone call away. Maybe we should call uh, Gino. Should we get him on the horn? Someone, oh, so, You guys have the address down below. Uh, just uh, mail us a... Gina, Jessie's Gina's actually in her weight class right now. She said, "Yeah, yeah. she don't even need to cut. That's it. She's good to go." But to to, go. okay, now I have a question for you. If you don't need to cut, like, does that affect your performance negative? I feel like it affects it negatively affects your performance. Well, the truth is, if if you're really like 115 right now, right. I put 10 pounds of muscle on you, so you walk around at 125, and then you cut it, and then cut. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, why would you want to be so small? Right. Some girl who's built like me is gonna manhandle you. She's gonna yeah. be jacked and hairy. Right. You one, know. And, one. You know what I'm saying? You need some more. Like it's, if you're that light, if you don't want to go to 105, right? Put on because, 10 pounds of muscle. Yeah, because some organizations don't have 105. Most so don't. It's, yeah, it's unless you went to, to one, stay. then yeah. we could fight in Japan together. Well, uh, I don't want to go to Japan to be quite honest. Really? Can yeah. we back up to the hairy Why, girl part? The, you we're know, gonna make some hairy hair? girls out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, Kayla Harrison. Yeah, Kayla Harrison's got to have bull hair, right? High testosterone. Right? <laughs> High test. <laughs> so. 
Uh, we have uh, a lot to talk about tonight, and if you're just did, joining did us, did my wife leave the fucking chat already? Yeah, maybe it was the hairy bulls. See, that's because I, I see. I told you she doesn't even master be thinking about me. Oh my goodness, that's Aww. terrible. That's why I have to master be thinking about myself, guys. Now you think. Now you that, know uh, isn't that uh, did, what did uh, Ray call that? Uh, a narcissistic. A little quality? narcissistic. Well, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know what? Everyone has to be a little narcissistic <laughs> if you fight, right? What does your wife think about you competing in mixed martial arts? Oh my god, so. Okay, listen, I had like a 10-year layoff because I had my shoulder replaced twice. And then in the interim, I had owned a CrossFit gym for like five years. And uh, and then what, so whatever. So I had a la- listen, life, I lived a life in between. And then I want, you know, after I closed my gym, I, I wanted to do it again. Your, for, your wife's in there. She says, hey, I'm masturbating right now. Oh, great. Who are you is thinking that- about, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Are you, thinking, in the chat. are you really thinking about me this time? <laughs> Hold on. Let me put it on. All right. There we go. Let me play some sexy music. This is for, this is for All Tammy. All right. Here we go. Do All, you right. Wanna- All right. All right. There he is. He's masturbate away. All right. <laughs> Tammy, who are you thinking about? What does he look like? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now the whole chat's ma- masturbating to Tammy. Tammy, be careful. Oh, listen. Ta- I tell you what. Tammy, can you get a picture of your titties up there? Whoa. Oh, oh that- my God. He said, no. she, one, one she goes, uh, Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah. That guy's hung like a horse. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Yo, that guy is like a fucking 12-inch dick soft. <laughs> well, how did you see his dick? It's in a movie. Tammy, what movie is that? Can, do you remember? Liam Neeson showed his cock. Liam no, he was like running naked in like the woods. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate when people are running and their cock is still big. Like huge, I feel, massive, I, uh, bigger than your fucking forearm. I hate that. Massive. I can't stand. I can and I can flaccid. Never... It's flaccid. It's like uh, I know. You know it's it's I know. It's terrible. I can you run with a boner? I don't know. I guess you could. Have you ever tried? No, I never tried. But I feel like it, it would just be drop distracting. the ones in the chat if you've ever tried to run with a boner. Let's yeah. see how many ones. I we feel get. like it's Has distracting. Anyone tried to run with a boner? I haven't. No. Personally. You ever got a boner in, in uh, at Laura MMA? We, what would <laughs> Have I ever got a boner at Laura MMA? Yeah. I mean, no. That's why I wear a cup. Oh, uh, okay. This way, if it gets a semi, it stops. <laughs> what? Well, like, so it stops at the semi. Uh, that's the, there you go. Now you know. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to get wood at the gym. What the hell? I heard Al Jermaine Sterling was uh, uh, a guy who trained with over there. He, he was on Joe Rogan. He was talking about cups, and they're all the same size. Is this true? Like all the cups are depends the same on what cup you're talking about. But I use the metal cup, mm. like the Muay Thai steel cup. Yeah, those come sizes. The only problem with those is you got to tie it up your ass crack like a G string. Okay. But I don't mind having that string in my ass. I'm used to it. I don't blame you. You know, or those years I was away from fighting. Gotta, I mean, I'm going to tell you. I we got to clip things for sound money. bites, like sound bites from the show tonight. I don't <laughs> mind having that string up my ass. I don't mind. Well, I have a follow up <laughs> question. Um, how big is Al Jermaine Sterling's cock? I mean, I think that's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> Uh, no. I don't know. Oh, come on. Yeah, come oh, on. All right, we try. Come we on, try. we can't. Listen, we <laughs> you can only talk about your own cock. Let me tell you this. Hold uh, on. I'm going to give you a guy code right here. Okay. You can only speak about your own dick. You uh, can't talk about another guy's, the size of another well, guy's dick. Oh, you're on the MMA holes. You can if do it. If you want to talk about how big your dick is, you can. <laughs> oh, it's so tiny. It's but terrible. you can't talk about how big my dick is. <laughs> oh, fair enough. All right. Fair Unless enough. you say it's huge. Unless we make a deal. By the way, what are we sipping on over here? What do we got? Oh, I brought some mead work, some Heidelberg mead. They're in upstate New York. Uh, today is Odin's day, and go. I am the son of Odin, so uh, I figured we'd bring some mead to celebrate the gods, praise Odin. Salud. You know, it is very good. Mm. Uh, I love honey wine. It's you delicious. Know, the alcohol is very important for our ancestors, especially mead. It's very difficult to get sugar in the ancient world. Mm. So alcohol has the highest caloric density other than fat, okay. and it's all sugar, so it would have been pretty helpful to have it around for post-workout and pre-workout. So, all right. So this is a, a constant debate between him and I because he doesn't like wine because it's filled with sugar. But uh, what? Oh, I'm out of the. There you go. Sorry, he doesn't like wine because it's filled with sugar, right? Yeah. So, but I, I, well, honey. it's natural sugars that have been, um, like they've been sitting there fermenting for forever, and now you're saying that it's good to have the sugars. Well, a little bit. Listen, I said, I said it was good for our. Aunt. We have a donation coming. Law MMA is back. JBH, what will be your nickname? Jessica, ring your bell, Hill. Guess fighter is funny. Can you break down Usman versus Colby? How do you see that going down, Paisano? Okay, okay. so <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have a nickname because I already have one. It's JBH, it's just my initials. So What is it? JBH is your initials? Yeah, they, I go by JBH everywhere, so that we, would just be it. I mean, yeah. you don't know. We might give you a Battlefield nickname. Uh, yeah, you need a battle nickname. JBH is like a show thing. You need a, like a... Like, you have flaming. to earn it on the battlefield. Yeah, though. it's got to come. Yeah, later how does the on. Name, how did the manimal come about? Oh, I was at like a, so I used to train with Hydrigo Gracie, and uh, I'm, at, I'm I'm 
I'm, you know, doing jujitsu. Fucking guy gets me in a choke and I start, <laughs> I start gurgling the shit out and I'm defending it. I get out, I turn it around and I get the other dude and Rodrigo's like, man, you're like a little manimal, like a little man animal, like a little manimal. And my boy and I doing Philippe were, were there and they're like, oh shit, that's it. That's, that's, that's your nickname. And it just fit. Cause I'm short and I'm hairy. I run barefoot through the streets of East New York. <laughs> you know? I mean, uh, I, I barely wear shoes. People think, you know, I had a homeless person try to give me money in the city. Oh, well, that's not a bad thing, right? You can get a couple extra bucks, you know? Mm-hmm. Why not? Nah, I'd not go sure. for it. Nah. I mean, I thought it was very generous because I was just running like shirtless and barefoot. Yeah. And this girl's like, can you, do you have, can you give me money? You know? And I was like, oh, I don't have anything. And she looks at me and she's like, oh, do you need, do you need help? I was like, fuck. <laughs> That really <laughs> <happened>. <laughs> looks oh, at me, man. I'm barefoot, I'm sweating, I'm dirty. I think I was running in Central Park. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's loose. Like, the animal's loose again. She's like, you need help? I was like, well, psychological help. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the animal, he's on the casting couch. John the animal Beneduce. Hey, do you wait, wait. Do you get more donations if I take my top off or keep it on? We'll uh, find out. <laughs> actually, let's read the chat. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Any questions for the animal? And uh, let us know about this uh, top off situation. Let's see what uh, the chat says. Drunk Savage says 50 likes. Sunny Three D. foot 11. You're being generous. <laughs> Sunny D says that's, that's how big my plan. dick is. <laughs> <laughs> Two joins says, oh, damn, near never wears shoes. Rest in peace, catch, casting couch. Kelly Miller says, laughing my ass off post-resurrected. He looks like the guy who owns Black Zillions. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who's the guy who no, owns that guy's guy? mad jack, though, isn't he? No, no. Oh, I'm thinking of the strength and conditioning coach. The guy that, well, I don't Black Zillions doesn't even exist anymore. But it, I remember on the Ultimate Fighter, they had the Black Zillions versus, was it was a top team. I can't yeah, remember who they remember. fought. But um, it was like this short. Like <laughs> this guy, he looked like a uh, Paul Bearer from uh, WWE. That's I don't think Manimal looks like him. I'm just oh, gonna... that 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 I could do that too. I could be like someone's manager in WWE, yeah. like Paul Heyman or Paul Bearer. Why are all the managers in WWE called Paul? That's true. There is yeah. a lot of Pauls. Uh, Paul Paul Heyman, Paul Bearer, Paul Anderson. Do you watch WWE? Uh, not as much anymore, but I, I grew up on it as a kid. That's why I love the showmanship. Okay. That's why I love ah. to come out to the cage with all you know. With costumes, that's why I like to come out to the weigh-ins with costumes. Mm-hmm. I-, I love the showmanship of that '80s pro wrestling, so I grew up on it, and I just always loved it. Hmm. And when I first started watching MMA, it was even before UFC. Before okay. UFC, they had Pancrase, which was like hard style pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to make MMA, but it was like weird, right? It was like open hand slaps. They would have, you know, when Robot it was like 12. Where, where Ken Shamrock. Oh, shit. And, uh, we got a $30 donation coming in. Look at this. You're bringing in the money. This is the a proper 30 12. Donation. Holy Yo, what's my cut, bro? <laughs> Wait, does he want me to take my shirt off or keep it on? Well, find we're going to find out in a second. Raise your glasses proper over here. The proper donation. Yes. That's proper. proper 12. This is from uh, Michael Anzalone. Thank you, Michael Anzalone, a fellow guinea. That's what I like to see. <laughs> Finally, a, a, Hi, fucking, a guinea I that supports another one. I just to say thanks to you and everyone at MMA and Beyond for being so nice to Chris and Jesse. They mean Aww. the world to me. You have a fan for life. Good wow. luck with everything. Hi, Chris and Jesse. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Shout out to Law MMA. There you go. Shout out to Law oh, MMA. That's sweet. That you was have really a, nice. a fan for life. Oh, fan. shit. So Do you want me to... Maybe, I could even be nice. I could rub Chris's <laughs> shoulder. Or, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I could use a shoulder rub right now. Another you donation. Tight. You're right. Your right trap is tight. Oh, it's terrible. Kevin from Chicago's coming in. I got a bombshell story to drop. Got to open the phone lines. Okay. I want to get the minimal stake on it as well. Peace to the mystical to all my knitters in the chat. Vigo squad. Real, real. Flat Earth. Drunk Savage. Okay. Short Heart. And H. Shout out. You know the rest. Okay, so this is Kevin from Chicago. He wants us to open up the phone lines. And hey, if we have some time, we will open up. Would you like to take uh, calls? That's going to be so easy. They're all going to want to <laughs> talk to him and then like say the, the most cringy things. I well, see it already. We'll oh, see. yay. I want to cringe. <laughs> can I get a stalker out of this? Oh, man. I can only imagine. You don't want any of these stalkers. We got uh, Ali the Rat donating. Uh-oh. Ali. How does Colby V. Usman unfold? Okay. All right, so this guy's been donating. Uh, He's been asking the same question So over Colby and over. Usman. Uh, what do you think? I like the fight. The only thing I think is going to be a problem for Colby is Usman's firepower could become a problem. But uh, I tell you what, a lot of guys aren't, but I've always been a Colby Covington fan. I like what he's trying to do with his shtick. I like the, you know, he's playing that American card. He got Trump on his side. I like Covington. The kid could fight. And guys were underestimating him coming into the Lawler fight, and I have no idea why. 
You know, and me and him have the same favorite cardio. Oh, okay. hold on a second. I fell off a shopping cart. It's Chris Cyborg. I barely fucking hurt she fell off a much. shopping cart. Oh, my, my God. Look out. Open for business, two joints. I fell off my shopping cart. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. Hat and Harry, not so Sarah. <laughs> I guess. I Oh my god, like what a beautiful song. With ease. This is Chris Cyborg singing to us right now. With ease. What the hell is this? <laughs> All right, Frank Devon has just donated. Ouch. And he donated Chris Cyborg falling out of a shopping cart. Oh my god. Right. Here we go. So it's guys could, do, could like put videos He's up? the hairy Matt Sarah. <laughs> I am John the Manimal Benaducci. Guys, follow me on Instagram <laughs> at John the Manimal Benaducci. Guys, that's where I'm the most popular. My Instagram is popping off. Have you uh, have you ever got? I'm, I'm sure you've gotten Matt Sarah before. I, I'm sure people like relate well, you to I'm Matt Sarah. I mean, I'm a short New York guy, and I am a Matt Sarah second degree black problem to Matt Sarah. So I have been around him a long time. I want to get some <laughs> Matt Stor Sarah stories, but finish your thought on that Colby Covington thing. And people, thank Colby you for the Covington, donations. So, um. And, uh, Uzman. Yeah, I would love to see Colby Covington beat Usman personally. Uh, I just don't know if uh, he's going to be able to deal with. Uh, I think Usman hits harder. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know, Covington hits like he was just touching them, just touch, 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 touch. Usman almost knocked out Woodley, and Woodley got a great chin. Yeah, so, that was crazy. That was a complete domination. You know, it's funny. Weight like class, Mike S, uh, 145, but I was thinking to make it a move up to like heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> a little jump to heavyweight. Little Why jump, not? small jump. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about Geno's, and it made me think about <laughs> maybe moving up to heavyweight. You know? <laughs> I mean, I am five five. So now, and now, explain Matt Sarah. I mean, listen, how did you meet Matt Sarah? And um, uh, oh, okay, so this is good. Listen, you don't know how it used to be back in the day. It was hard to train. Mm. So to get our jujitsu in, me, my friend Nardu, and Philippe. We were training at the Jeet Kune Do school, right? And then Matt Serra and Rodrigo Gracie uh, got their black belts in 1999 from Henzo Gracie. Okay. And they opened a school in Val... No, they didn't even open a school. Hold on. Hold that thought real quick. Uh, Luca Brazzi sleeps with the fishes. This is that. Jake so, the Snake is donating. Hold on. Are you Mexican? What is your full heritage? What the fuck? That's so random. What kind of question is that? She's man? a little Mexican. All right, back to the story. Sorry about that. These uh, donations are crazy. Can she hear a Ryu Dojo? You're barely 5'4". Oh, you know me? <laughs> Thanks, bro. Oh, he's a All Brooklyn right. guy, too. Is he a Brooklyn guy? Yeah. Oh. He's, he's our yellow friend from Brooklyn. Oh, okay. So you, so you understand. You're Asian. You're probably <laughs> sure, too. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, my God. So what the fuck is that? Oh, so Matt Sarah and Rodrigo Gracie used to teach like two or three days a week in the back of a karate school in Valley Stream. Oh, wow. So we started going there because Valley Stream was like the closest place to Brooklyn, if you think about it, at that time. It, was no, it wasn't like now that there's like a million jujitsu schools. We were doing jujitsu on those little puzzle mats. We would do takedowns, wrestling. Oh, my God. And everyone that trained back in the day did it because they wanted to fight. And then I think Matt had just started fighting MMA. He was fighting at that vengeance. So Ring of Combat was a regional show called Vengeance at the Vanderbilt in Plainview on Round Swamp Road Okay. at the Vanderbilt nightclub. No kidding. And they were fighting at that, and they would call, They would have some kickboxing fights. They would have some uh, all different types of kickboxing. It was like waist-up kickboxing, PKA. Then it was like Muay Thai bouts. And they had what they called a grappling exhibition match. Mm -hmm. And a grappling exhibition match was an MMA fight. You know, regular MMA fight. You know, wow. pro, pro rules, everything. Okay. I think some of them you could do headbutts and everything. It was oh, like shit. wild. Because the early UFCs, it was, you yeah, remember, this is 1999, 2000, 2001. Everything goes, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely remember they were allowed to elbow in these grappling exhibitions. So, so quick uh, side question. So, what do you think about that? Like them kind of condensing it to 12 to 6, can't do that anymore, you know, all the crazy stuff. King K, what the f He fought Matt Sir in a movie theater over a corner seat during Doctor Strange. <laughs> I believe that story. <laughs> I believe that Matt Sarah is a huge Marvel fan. I mean, so am I. We all are. Who's not? What, ki what kind of guy that does martial arts doesn't like superheroes? Yeah, I gotta think it's got a nice little influence uh, superheroes. So, what do you think about the uh, like the strikes, like how they stop the twelve to six and all that stuff? And you know, you can't 
you know, knee someone while they're down and a grounded opponent and all that. Do you feel like the way Pride used to be, it should still be like that? Or are you happy that they Don't kinda... you just call that Risen? Or Risen, yeah. That's true. If you want to do it that way, just do it that way. Whatever the rule set is, you just train for the rule set. Would you fight in something like something like Risen? Would you compete over there? You know, put me in Risen. They'd love me over there. My style, my showmanship. Mm. They fucking love me in Risen. If I was in Risen, they'd let me come out with a bigger show. Then True, I could yeah. get four chicks. Dressed up like the animals, animals oh. to come out to the cage with me on leashes. The yeah, on oh, leashes. Exactly. That, you know, I really shit. turned that shit up. We got a donation coming in. This is from Frank Bavon, and it's Anderson Silva playing a guitar in a cage. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> Frank Bavon's going cray cray with the donations. Oh, uh, the Damian Maya fight, one of the most boring fights in UFC history. Oh man. All right, let's see what Frank Bavon's got going on over here. Has I ever made anyone shit their pants in the cage? No, but I almost shit my pants in the cage. <laughs> I got. You want to hear that story? I do actually. Hold on, let's hear what Frank Bavon has to say. Ask Matt Sarah's hairy brother if he. That's ever what I just made said. I just read it. <laughs> okay, okay. I said there I haven't go. made anyone shit their pants, but I almost so, shit my pants. So I'm at Ring of Combat, and uh, dude, before I come out, I'm like, oh no, I gotta fucking drop a deuce, but uh, but I have to go out. You know, they're like, who's John Beneducci? I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, me, they're like, you're up. I'm like, oh, man, I got to drop a deuce. I was like, oh, shit. No, where, where was so, this again? Ring of Combat. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'm at Ring of Combat, and I'm like, oh, man, I got to drop this deuce. So I'm like, all right, I got to finish this fight quick. But you know the fight, let's say it's 15 minutes. You're actually out there doing your thing for a while. The walkout, the in-cage stuff, he walks out. Now you're talking about a half hour. The fight winds up going the distance. We go back and forth. I hold my asshole together <laughs> somehow by some miracle. Now I run backstage. I had a cut, right? So I have a cut and I'm like running to the bathroom and the doctor stops me. He's like, stop. I got to check your cut. I'm like, no. And he's like, I'm going to suspend your license if you don't stop. I'm like, whatever, motherfucker. So I go into the bathroom and you just hear. <laughs> oh. So I'm in there for like 20 minutes. Oh, if you go, K Kenodo, if you go further down my Instagram, you'll see me dressed like a centaur at the Ren Fair. Me and my wife got married at the Renaissance Fair, so I do like to dress up in costume. But it's far down my centaur outfit. Right, oh, so it. I have to hold. So I, I dropped this massive deuce. 20 minutes later, I come out. The doctor's there. He's like, we're okay. He's like, I understand. I was like, thank you. <laughs> you know, we ask most fighters. $20 to fart on Jesse. What would you pay for uh, for us to have a threesome? <laughs> 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 if you, and then, hold on. You tell me what you pay for a threesome? And... Let me know what you pay for a foursome. I'll tell Tammy to come over. Oh, oh my God. Look at that. It's, getting, it's getting hot and heavy in hot here. Hot and heavy. It is a little hot in here. I will tell you that. My uh, legs are sweaty. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like sweating on my I tell legs. you what, it's a perfect view for the uh, the audience over here. It's they okay. get to see <laughs> right down the pants over there. Right down the pants. Should I open up? <laughs> I haven't had any take. Uh, do you want me to cover it? Like, on my no, shirt? that's all right. Like that's all right. We, we enjoy it. The, the audience is uh, rubbing it out uh, to that. I mean, this is the casting couch. Well, that's, you know, it's your front so, and center. So I have my master's from Brooklyn College in history. <laughs> Then my, uh, I have a degree in forensic psychology as well. <laughs> I didn't think I would be on the casting couch, but I heard the money was good. Is this the first casting couch you've been on, or uh, on this side of it? Yeah. No, oh, okay. There you this go. is the first Wait. time I've been on this Wonderful. side. Wonderful. There you go. The Manimal on the couch tonight for TGIW season three episode thirty one. I could touch my foot to my and, head. What about that? That's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. Like I can. I'll, <laughs> my my back hurts just watching yeah. that. It's insane. You're you know, I'm more, I'm more athletic than I look. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like I'll do what stuff in the gym and people look at me. I was like, I I'm a professional athlete. I know I look like shit, but I perform well. Yeah. Shit. Well, I got to say, so let me let me ask you a question. Law MMA is a gym with a bunch of killers over there. You got so many uh, people. UFC belts are all over the place. <laughs> and oh. <laughs> what do you got? This guy must know me. Pixelated. <laughs> what? <laughs> what you... Pixelated bingo. Just get a guy who's invited over and never leaves. <laughs> you must know me. <laughs> Have I been over your crib One before? <laughs> Pixelated Vico, yo. He's calling you out. What's up? I'll come over for dinner. <laughs> hey, but listen, Chris, Jesse, didn't I come bearing gifts? You did. You did. I didn't yeah. come empty handed. I came with goodie bags, alcohol. We drink and have a good time. Uh, came in swag. Do you make people take the issues off in your house? No, he just took them off. I bet his feet smell like onions. No. Onion no, they smell great because I never have them caught up also, in shoes. Also, he gets handsy with Jesse in practice. <laughs> there was quite literally nothing you could do about it. He That's true. I, I can't do anything. I just got to stand there. You got something about it. He uh, can jump in. <laughs> hey. Join so, the party. I do like his beard. 
Oh, it's beautiful. I do right? like Chris's beard. Yeah, uh, yo, let me try some of that beard oil. Check this out over here. Is that 50% your sponsor? Off. Yeah, real bearded, real bearded man. man. I'm a real bearded man. Here you go. Look at All this. Right? A See real bearded here? fucking fighter, too. You're going to smell like... um. What is tropical. This? this is the tropical one. This is one I use. Here you go. Tropical. Here's some wax. Rub that all over your beard. And, what uh, about your chest hair? And put it wherever your ball sack, anywhere you want it. It's it's a uh, perfect. My ball sack's pretty. Uh, what do you pretty think of the clean. smell? Be honest. You can you can say if it sucks. There we go. So no, I like. It. I'm putting it on. If you Not don't bad. mind. Do you as mind? You, no. As soon as you get home, oh man, it stinks. No. As soon as you get home, you're gonna open the door. Your wife's gonna just mount you from just having that in your beard. I know, <laughs> Jesse. Actually, Jesse is that how you right want? Now. Is that how you got Jesse? Yeah, actually, uh, that's, yeah. That's precisely how. She's she's dating Jesse. It. So he was masturbating, looking at pictures of you. Were you doing the same? Oh um, hell yeah! Yeah, sure. Oh whoa! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa! It's getting Fucking hot. Fucking liars. Yeah, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. <laughs> she, she was throwing up. Speaking of masturbating, we got pervert cameraman donation from Frank Pavon. He's making it rain boobies. Hey, I can see your underwear. Put your boobies in the air. They're all coming in here. Like I just don't care. Can I lick your pubic hair? Sing along, Jesse. Time to share. Took my meat vision <laughs> impaired. Proof in mind, I need a prayer. Is that Ariana Grande? Pervert cameraman, beware. Pervert cameraman. Show them tits. It's the pervert cameraman. Where he just concentrates on Ariane Celeste's breast. Ariane Celeste. Show, Show them breasts. breasts. Boobies. Boobies. All right. Us Matt Sarah's hairy brother best submission he ever done. Oh. Yeah, I think he could use you as a contraceptive moss. Okay. Well, we got to... Uh, hold on. Let me mute you. Malfunction? <laughs> All right. There it is. Okay. I'm good. There you go. Um, I had a lot going on over there. <laughs> Sorry to make love to the microphone. <laughs> if people had headphones on, their ears blew out. Uh, th this is actually a good question over here. Your best submission... Was it your last fight in Bellator? Was that? Do you think of that as your best submission? I didn't submit the guy, though. No, so then it wasn't. No. Wait, I thought you did. Didn't you? Oh, no, you didn't submit no. that guy. Oh, shit. I was close. That kid was good. Listen, he's well-trained. Right. He, uh, you know, good purpose. So what was your best submission? submission? My best submission. I love this particular neck crank from side control I really like. Okay. Rear naked chokes are always good, too. Um, I mean, I, re I really like this. I do one neck crank that no one else really does. I really like that. Uh, I say I get that off a lot in training. I get the guillotine choke off a lot in training too. Uh, Kimuras I've been getting a lot lately. So, but but there's one neck crank. Maybe I'll show it uh, next time. I'll show it with Jesse. There you go. But I would like to break down some of the moves I did in my fight. Even though I didn't get the finish, I did do a lot of great jujitsu. I know you didn't realize because you were too busy. Yeah, uh, I was, wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it's alright. You don't know much about <laughs> the actual skill of MMA anyway. Yeah. So there's not much for you to say. I don't. I don't. I, all I know is I just like to just live stream and just you know bullshit and blab and you know that's just how I work here. I like to do that too, but. Yeah. So tell me about this this fight over here. I mean, you're pretty excited about this fight. This is your last one. MSG, big crowd, big I mean, audience. Was, MSG, the Manimals Animals were in full force. If you listen to it, go watch that fight again and listen to the crowd. All right? The cheering for the Manimal. There you so go. no, it was a big fight. I mean, there was a lot on the line. And one of my best friends who I trained with for years uh, passed away like the week before my fight. Oh, so shit. one of the guys I trained with for years, and uh, so I had a lot ride. My friend James Gabbert, uh, you know, it actually just popped up in my feed today of us hitting the pads together two years ago. So, uh, so yeah, so I had so much riding on that. You know, my best friend died, my wife's birthday. It was like so much on the line, which is why when I won, it was like so fulfilling. Plus, I had dropped the, my first fight in Bellator. So mm. it was definitely uh, rewarding. But my first fight in Bellator, you know what? I had fought at 155. I was small for that weight class. And I hadn't fought in 10 years. Imagine if you had a fuck a porn star after not fucking for 10 years in front of 10,000 people. You know, and and, and c considering all those factors, the fight was pretty good. No, oh, absolutely. So. Well, I mean, I, listen, anytime you get to fight in front of your home crowd like that and then oh, no, get I'm to win. I'm talking about the fight before this, I dropped. So for this for, for this fight, it was a lot riding on it. But oh, okay. you know what? I just told myself, let it all hang out. And uh, I praised Odin. I called out to the gods, and I was like, "Whatever happens, I'm good with it." And everything went the right way. There you, you know, go. I practiced. I trained. Everything fell in line. I almost died during the weight cut, but who cares? <laughs> Shit. That was that your worst weight cut? Mm -hmm. Man, oh man. And how much did you cut for that fight? I mean, it was like 12 pounds. I had practiced it before, but mm. it just wound up with the timing and the I don't know. It was just brutal. Well, we are live with John the Manimal Beneduce. 
He's three two. And Benaduce. Benaduce. He's three two and zero. Pro fighter. He's fighting a. Wait, what uh, do you they say? don't have my no contest in there. You know what happened once? There was a fight. <laughs> You're gonna laugh. They did a fight at the sandbox in Atlantic City, and it got rained in. No. <laughs> and again, oh, stop it. Are you serious? I swear. Yo, that's my wife. <laughs> Fucking sandbox. <laughs> Fuck. oh, They're man. like, oh, it's gonna be great. It's May. We're gonna. Have... So, uh, so yeah. So, but that's not even on there. It was so old. You know? Oh my God! And it was so crazy. It was like, <laughs> rain, we got a rain delay for the game. I was like, "Well, this makes sense. We're on a baseball field." What, you know, the shit that went on I mean, back in the day—that's pretty risky. You know, right? even my amateur, what, what you guys would call amateur fights, we were just fighting in like clubs. Mm-hmm. They're not even on the record. You know, yeah. people people rag on amateur fights. They're just as fucking brutal as these pro fights. Like people are like, oh, I think amateur it's fight. yo amateur fights is like the excuse to not pay dudes. Is I that a, yeah? I am a pagan. Infinity Con. What's wrong with that? So is that what you think? I mean, there are a lot of guys that are like have 10, 12. Some people have like 20 Ami fights. It's insane. And they aren't getting paid over here. And it's kind of ridiculous. What's the deal with that? Why can't amateur fighters get paid? What's the reasoning for that? Well, that's the difference between amateur and pro. Amateurs so that's it. That's the difference between any amateur sport and a pro sport. Amateurs don't get paid. Mm. Uh, you got to get paid something. It's ridiculous. Well, it's I guess ridiculous. you could get sponsors I guess and stuff. they could get sponsors and ticket sales. I sponsor some amateur fighters when I can. Who in the I run a training camp in upstate New York, Manimal mm-hmm. Training Camp. Okay. Guys, Manimal Training Camp, September 21st, 22nd, upstate New York, www.manimaltrainingcamp.com. There you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but uh, yeah, really better on my Instagram to check out what we're doing. But yeah, so I run a training camp, and sometimes I try to sponsor the guys with that. But I need to do something again that makes a lot of money so I can sponsor more guys. Sure. I like helping the team out. You're in the gym a lot, huh? Law MMA, you're hanging out there a lot. You're training guys. You're training yourself. <laughs> Um, how do you make time for yourself when you're just basically helping other people as well? Well, listen, I'm selfish when I train for a fight, though. Mm. I'm not helping. I, you know, I cut down all my clients. They understand. You know, if it's 12, I, I need to take a little longer. I take 12 weeks yeah. to get ready if I can because, listen, the truth, I'm a little older. It takes me a little more time to get there. You know? When do you see yourself so, back into the cage? When do you think you're going to be competing again? When the gods tell me to. So you're just kind of waiting I'm around? In, yeah, I mean, I'm training, but at a modest level. Nothing crazy. I'll spar tomorrow, though. I want to go spar tomorrow night. I train this morning. So instead of training like 30, 40 hours a week, I'm, I'll train like, you know, maybe 10, 15 hours a week or something like that. In, uh, so I'll cut my training in half, and then I pick up that other half in clients mm. so that I could try to stack a little money on the side. Because when you do the – you don't get paid till you fight. So that whole camp, I'm suffering. That's crazy, man. That is That is insane. And then, and then by the time you by the time you get paid, you have to split it up, and, and you got to pay this person and that person, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, you got to pay your taxes too. That's Don't crazy. Forget about that, the expenses you accumulate. So I would you good. would you say the next fight that you're looking for is something that pays well? Is that what you're looking for, or is it just uh, for it competitive? Has to be the, it has to be the right thing. Right thing. I okay. talked about it with Ray, and uh, you know, the only things that's going to make my dick hard to fight uh, got to be the Barkley Center. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a Brooklyn boy. Fight the Barclays would be epic. Or I'd like to fight in Japan. Do the showmanship. Go that route. What about a one-off? You know, the UFC is coming to uh, Madison Square Garden in November. What I'm if- not a, I love MMA, but uh, UFC is not going to let me do the things I like to do. Mm-hmm. I can't come out with a fucking hammer. They're going to hate on me at the weigh-ins. They're going to fucking ruin my vibe. I'm not into it. Let's segue here. I'm okay. just saying, me personally, the guy I... It just My personality don't fit like that. So into what they do. No, I hear you, man. That's like, just the way I am. I, I know me, and I'm very happy with Bellator. I prefer that show for my style. Or a fight in Japan would be good because they like that style also. UFC has been uh, very interesting with us. It's been interesting with their fans. It's been interesting with their fighters. I feel like they don't treat their fighters well. We were talking about Colby Covington making 100000 for his the co-main event that? fight. That's and crazy. That's it, just right? insane to think that a guy who's the interim champ and if he would have lost that fight, he only would have got 50 J. So it's a hundred grand to win. They should be ashamed of themselves. Right? I mean, be ashamed of themselves. Robbie Lawler made 220. I would be ashamed. If I, if I was the boss, I'd be ashamed of myself. You would think, but they don't care, right? It's just, it's all about, and it's all about money with the and UFC. grab some next dude if you don't want to do it. That's, that's like how you it were works. telling me about the fighters union. These guys can't even get paid the right way when they're the champs. Forget about, you know, guys on the lower level. Yeah. I like the uh, you're, you don't remember. I like there was a show called IFL back in the day. Wait, hold on though. We got a donation coming in. This is uh no escape, no escape. One can the shoeless fella on your couch do the splits like Jean Claude? <laughs> Two is he spending the night at your house? 
Three, I heard Bellator paid a guy 50 bucks once. Was it him? Four, ask him if Nick Newell and Jason Pierre Paul arm wrestled. Who would win? Oh, it's so fucked Yo, up. Yo, Nick, no, Nick Newell's nub. I'm trying to get the split, but uh, the couch is a little small, even for me. You know, you did be some tight fucking on this couch, let me tell you. It's, yeah, uh, that's not the best casting couch. It, it looks it's weird. It's all right. No, it's, it's good enough for me. I mean, I fit in small places. Nick Newell's going to Bellator. Yeah, what do you yeah, think about he, that? I, I think it's cool. I like it. <laughs> I like a guy that doesn't, uh, <laughs> that doesn't give a fuck what Dana White says. Oh, yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, listen, he'll go with his nub. I don't want to fight that guy. I don't want that nub anywhere near me. Do you think, yeah, what do you think about that? that uh, I, we're actually friends with Nick. Um, he's a real nice guy. Uh, but we've, I, I asked him a question. I said, is it a hit with the ladies, the nub? I asked him, right? And he, he came back with a great singer. He goes, ask your mom. I was like, oh, Nick oh. Newell got me with the nub, right? But I'm wondering this. Some people say that when he gets that choke, it's actually an advantage to have that half of arm the way he yeah. gets under the chin. I told my wife, I was like, I bet that little nub is mad strong. <laughs> we got Kevin from Chicago. Ask the man -mill if he wants to open the phone lines. Man, I'm all your call. Do you want to hear from the people or what? All right. I we love talking to he, people. He asks us as if Kevin runs the show. <laughs> yeah, like, Kevin from Calm Chicago down, Kevin. is this like You'll get your three chance, foot tall bud. guy from Chicago. Shorter yeah. than me? Let me tell you about this guy. This guy, he How do you know Kevin from Chicago? Did you go on a date with him? Uh, yeah, we we had sex once, but it was it was a uh, it was a quickie. Who gave it? Who took it? Well, he he uh, received. He was he was catching that night. Right. But um, this guy over here, he calls in right, and he actually is a pretty good caller for the most part. But then he preaches how he's been in the war and this and that, and he's what talking. War? He's never been in a on cage. the streets of Detroit. That's the thing. Like, what do you think about these guys, right? That haven't competed in Bellator, haven't competed in the UFC, in the in the big dances, the big lights. Just throwing around. Well, I've I've been doing this and I've been doing that. Let me that. tell you, it's 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 uh it's a lot different when you're in front of everyone doing it. I've heard a lot of people say they could do shit, but I like to see you show me. <laughs> Is you it know? insulting though? I mean, uh, you know, coming from a guy that actually. Well, I told you the Dunning Kruger effect. I always remember that. So when someone's talking shit, I remember that the more shit they talk, thinking they could do it, the crappier they probably are. Mm. You know. That's so, probably exactly what it is. So that's what it is, because they don't know. So if you don't know. You can't blame someone for their own ignorance when they don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, the second that he would find out, like let's say he came to law and they were like Sparm Animal and I broke his face, then he would stop talking so much shit. <laughs> but until that happens, the guy doesn't know. So I have to think about that. I'm like, oh, this guy's talking shit because he doesn't understand. Mm. And if the guy doesn't understand, I can't get that upset about it. Yeah. And so well, I don't want to. So I don't want to really get upset about it. Why would I? He just doesn't know. It's yeah. like if you were, let's say... When you're a baby, right? A little baby, you tell the baby the earth is 27,000 miles in circumference. They don't understand what Boom, that means. Roasted. Boom, roasted. Right? They don't understand you that. Boom, they're, roasted. You don't understand what that means. That makes sense. Frank Pavan just says, Kevin, thank you for the donation, Frank. Appreciate it. You like that, right? Did you know the earth is 27,000 miles in circumference? That's, that's, I just learned that tonight. That's insane. Go. Wait, Fun what do you fact. do? What do you store all this knowledge? This is insane. Dude, I have so much degree. I, I told you, I'm an educated dude. Yeah, well, I, uh, all that time off, I, I got my master's in history. I have awesome. Degrees in psychology. I mean, I, I've been around the block. Dude, that's great. I'm an adventurer. I do so, Fuck. you know. I wish you, I was good in school. I, I, could, I could never sit there. I was just fidgeting like a, like uh, a knucklehead. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't great in high school, but I rock college. All right, so what are you bad at? That's the question. What are you bad Math. at? Math. Math. No good? Math. I'm not a super tech guy either. Mm -hmm. I'm not super high tech. I mean, I run in the woods. I'm not like the guy behind the computer desk. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, like like this setup you got now. I'm like, wow, oh, this is really cool. Like, <laughs> I was like, I never would set this up. I would be like, hey guys, you want to come over and do this? I'll give you some money. To... You'd be like, John, this is how you set this up. I'm like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, I guess I'd be like, that would be like me showing you the armbar. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. Just do it for me. You know. Uh, well, I tell you what, we're looking forward to get back into uh, Law MMA, maybe film I'm some live streaming over I there. said if you guys, I, I know you guys are busy with PFL. Yeah, it's going to be a what lot of What do you guys fun. think of that PFL concept? I love it. I freaking love it. I think, oh, first of all, I think Kayla Harrison needs some competition. I want to see Cyborg go over there. That's what I want to see. Cyborg but go over there. But PFL. Kayla's at 55. She can make 45. Yeah, though. she can make 45. I would, I would think she, she could. She called out Cyborg, so she can 100% yeah, make 45. Yeah, she can make 45. I saw she called her out. That'd be a good fight, I think. I mean, a chance to win a million dollars, and they are still getting paid in Yo, these other fights I, as well. I think it's crazy that they're able to pay them. How long are they going to be able to pay them? So you think they're just dumping money into it, and they're not really Hey, let's see. I profiting? mean, it's great for the fighters that are getting to to make that money because that they're paying what fighters deserve to get paid mm -hmm. and well, you know that you're in line for a title 
it's not like UFC where it's like, well, we don't, maybe you'll get the shot. Maybe you won't. You know, when you're in line for a title, you, who has the points, who's, who adds up to be in the finals makes sense. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I think so it's great. I like, I like PFL too. You know what? I really kind of like the ref cam. Yeah, you like that? I kind of like the ref the in, What about the intelligent cage where they're, they're tracking all the stats of like Oh, punch the force speed. and everything. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. A little too much data for my taste, but it is interesting, actually. It's funny. It doesn't look like they really fill the places up. Have you been in the building for a PFL fight or no? Let me ask you something. When you go to PFL, do you pay for your ticket? Well, we would get press passes. Who the fuck pays for a ticket to yeah. PFL? I have not <laughs> met one person yet. Yeah. I have not met one person yet that I know that has paid for a PFL ticket. Yeah. That is the interesting. The more this show goes on, the more comfortable I'm getting on this casting couch, guys. We got, we got They're one. right. I, I might not leave. Say, hey, Tammy, you want to meet me over here tonight? They got I some extra space. He was brainwashed by left-wing hack history professors. He probably thinks Trump is Hitler. Hashtag Gino's garlic rolls. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. That's, that that's funny, Southern born. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm pretty objective. There you go. I think actually, I think it's crazy how vilified Trump is. Like I'm not saying I'm for or against because at the election I voted for myself, <laughs> and that's the god honest truth. You can ask my wife. I penciled myself in. Fuck those two. I'm not voting for for either one of them. I don't uh, elect my oppressors. Yeah. So whatever. So listen, but Trump is so funny. The hate this guy gets. Can I get one second? I just want one thing. That, this shooting stuff. Every, they're blaming Trump. I was like, yeah, because he's been president for 20 years since the first shooting. Stop it, guys. He gets blamed for everything. Oh, the Any, whole gun control? Anything stuff? that goes bad is Trump's fault, even if his predecessor did twice as worse. Yeah. So let me. you're a Trump well, guy then, you're saying, right? I, no, I'm saying I'm a me guy, but yeah. Trump, I'm, a, I'm in between. I just look at the... I'm just an observer here. Yeah, I look at this. And way. Trump is like vilified for for almost nothing. If if I mean I'm, we're not gonna get too much into politics. Yeah, here, yeah but, I don't want to get too. But I'm just saying, as an observer, it's just a little crazy that he could do something like with the immigration stuff. He he puts it, the policy separates kids from families. Okay, mm. Obama does twice as much of it. No one says a fucking thing. He does half as much of it. <laughs> And it, and has like a whole shitstorm about it. Uh huh. So I think that the press covering him is is a little unfair. Okay, that's fair enough. There we go. Uh, thoughts from the manimal. There we go. We should make this like a weekly seg segment. The thoughts from the manimal. You better right? be careful. Ray already said you might not be able to get rid of me. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the manimal is here. Oh, I here. see you got your small dick condoms. Yeah. Is that, well, those. Oh, that's good. That's from the aliens. Oh, the one over there. That's from Pulse. Pulse resurrected. He uh, sent a. a what happened? You put them on the side. They didn't fit. Yeah. Well, I mean. I have I have many of them, so I, I you know I, I have extra. I just throw on the wall, just in case uh, you know I need it on the couch. By the way, you see your boy over there, Chris Wyben, hanging out on the wall. I did the uh, the shoot for Gotham Magazine. I did the video shoot for them, and uh, Chris Wyben is going to be fighting soon. He's fighting uh, at he's going up to two or five. Yeah, what do you like, think about that? I like it. I like it. You know, I think uh, sometimes new weight class, who this, you know, change the weight class, maybe uh, clean slate for him. It'd be epic if he could write the story of, you know, listen, let's one fight at a time, one fight at a time. Let's finish this fight, and then we can talk about everything else after that. But uh, Chris is a good size. I think he'll be good at that weight. And Chris is a great competitor. Uh, you know, I'd say underrated. I mean, I know he came up a little short a couple fights, but in those fights he came up short. He was fighting the best guys in the world and giving it to him. And he was winning. Like, that's you what You know that fight me. with you over Romero? No one's ever got dominated like that for two rounds. It's just that dude's a beast. Mm. You know, he carries his power forever. I tell you what, uh, Chris Weidman, a lot of people are saying that he is ruined now after after these these finishes. Do you believe that? Do you think that he's a different man? Or do you feel that, you know, he just took a little setback? I mean, listen, he's he's taken enough time to recover. But hold on one second. We got a, a donation from uh, One Southern Born. A lot of the viewers want open lines. Give the people what they want, yeah. you short fucks. Two is, two is not a lot. Can you imagine DB with that jelly belly on the sofa? <laughs> Epic phone call, hashtag All two. Right. Maybe we'll open the phone lines later, but it is my show and Jesse's show, and you can fuck off. You can just listen and enjoy. All right, uh, back to your thoughts on uh, Chris White. So, yeah, definitely. I think that guy's an up-and-comer. I think he's ranked. I think he's in the top ten, right? Dominic Reyes, right? Yeah, Dominic yeah. Reyes. And then uh, I, I like the ramifications for 205. I think it'll spice that division up. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then Chris is he's wrestling's dynamite. Puts it together good. 
You know, I mean, I'm a Weidman fan, even even if he wasn't my boy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Weidman fan. You know, well, and I'd love to see I'd love to see him come up. I mean, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but how epic would it be if he could uh, if he could beat John Jones? Oh, I've That'd been be the best story ever. I've been screaming about this forever. I yeah. want the movie. I want the movie. Yeah. I want the Silva, then the collapse, and then all of a sudden, boom! He, he rises the rankings and goes yeah. up against John Jones. I mean, that is let's what let story? God, let's let the gods decide. But that's what I would like to see. Are you fearful now? What? How do you stop him? How, how do you train him so he doesn't become the next Luke Rockhold? You saw what happened with Luke when he went up and he got knocked the fuck out. Like that was terrible against Blackowitz over there. Yeah, it was a what's, bad fight. What's to say that that doesn't happen to Wyman? Well, or that's why I love MMA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why I love MMA. You gotta see. I don't go. think so. He's a little bit smarter fighter. I think Rockhold's a little cocky. Uh, I think the worst thing that ever happened to Rockhold. Don't take that child from Chicago's oh, call. <laughs> Or else it will result in a massive exodus of us subscribers. <laughs> Hearing him talk about physical combat is like listening to Jesse talk about baseball. Don't talk about what you don't. All right, know. so there we go. Att I attacking. Don't talk about baseball, so it, fuck you. No, Jess, it was a weird compliment. Anyway, uh, that was a shout out uh, to whoever went after Kevin from Chicago over there. Thank Man, you for Jess, the donation. Your face just wonderful. changed there. Ooh, you want to go, go get him, Jesse? Attack. No, it's too late. You shut me down already. All right, all right. You missed the opportunity. Anyway. Let's move on to this. We didn't even get a chance to talk about this uh, topic, which is on our thumbnail. Wonderful. Chris Cyborg and Dana White. Okay, they've been going back and forth, and now Cyborg is not re-signing. Well, we don't know yet. We never know. But Dana White goes on the Contender Series, and he speaks to the press. And this whole situation, Dana White says she's a nightmare to deal with. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw the, uh, the post-fight interviews uh, to the Contender Series, Mr. Manimal. But um, what are your thoughts on their relationship and how she was treated? Did they start fighting when he said she had a dick? Is that what <laughs> set it off? You know, it's funny. She dug that up. What? How many years ago did she? Do? She's been fighting with the She's UFC for five saying, years. Yeah. That was like the first thing I think she said. Yeah. And then about she, her having a dick. It's, it's funny. She, why did she wait so long to bring that up? You know, she brought I mean, that happened way back when. That happened. That Vandalay Silver Silva thing and... Uh, uh, yeah, Joe Rogan said uh, that she had a dick or some shit like that. But, I mean, that happened how Man many years H, ago? is this actually a girl asking about my balls? That actually is a girl. It's my actually... Balls. I tell you what, I do make sure that my balls and my pubic region are a little tamer than the rest of my body. And huh? in case you're wondering. <laughs> She's always wondering, Ann. In case right, you're Ann? wondering, Ann. I don't know what you look like, Ann. Yeah. But uh, now you know what my balls look like. Yeah, so to... <laughs> To clarify in the chat, uh, Rogan was the one that said the dick thing, and uh, Dana White said the Vandalay Silva. Dana White gets up. Oh, the Vandalay Silva. <laughs> which is pretty funny, right? I mean. <laughs> she does look like Vandalay Silva. Cyborg. You know, Cyborg, listen, if I told a lion that it had a mane, would it get mad at me? Like, oh, she's fucking. Oh, boom, she's Rose. jacked. Yeah. So she's you, fucking jacked. So you don't think Dana did anything wrong? No, listen, I didn't say that either. Dana's an ass. <laughs> Dana's an asshole to Cyborg. You know where they fucked her over? It wasn't with talking about a dick. It was with making that girl cut to a weight class that don't exist. There's no such thing as a 140-pound weight class. Why are you torturing that girl? Those four pounds are big. Remember those two or three fights you had in the UFC and they made her do 140 because there was no real weight class? You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that messed her up a lot. They were torturing that girl. He's right. an asshole. He and she was on the floor. She had the towel over. She was making the videos on how she was dying from this weight cut and blah blah blah. They were torturing. You're correct. Uh, this is a gay black Muslim is donating right now. Let's see what gay black Muslim. I'm has a gay to. black tranny, born and raised Jewish. I'm also fully disabled from the neck down. Hmm. My mother was a dyke that abandoned me. That's terrible. Can you open up the lines? <laughs> I'm super oppressed with all my victim titles. Yo, I bet you though. Wait, is that a guy or a girl? Uh, it's a gay black Muslim. We don't know if Do it's you a... have a dick. <laughs> yeah, Does we it have a dick. If it has a dick, I bet you if I sucked it, he'd become able again. Oh, huh. you, you, I would. Was that an offer? Is that a? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's see what we get donations. <laughs> see how much we get. The, how much would you donate for that? But I, I want it like a fight to show and to win. So if I show, I get a certain amount, and if he becomes not paralyzed, I get double. Jesse, thoughts thoughts on this? What do you think? Hmm. Oh no, you know I don't like that either. Hold on, Jesse. What's your thoughts on this? Win bonuses. I don't like them. I uh, think you should get paid. Like I want to win. There's yeah. nothing I. There's no amount of money you're gonna tell me you're gonna give me to make me want to win more. We're in a cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. So I'd rather you normalize the pay personally. 
Yeah. Really? Like you. So even, I mean, you're still gonna get the win. Like you still want the win. You're still gonna get it. But now you're gonna get more money. Yeah, you, but then I'm gonna get paid half if I don't win. What if the judge gives me a split decision the other way? Now, are you talking about bonuses? Because they get yelled at me about no, this. No, no, not a bonus like a like a performance of the night. You talk about win. I'm talking about your like win incentives, bonus. right? Yeah. yeah, no, no, you get a win. You get show money, win money. Yes, correct. Okay. I think that's silly. It's like we're both trying to win, and what if the decision is just close? Well, how now does, I get half my pay. How does Bellator do? They do the same thing. Everyone does it. That they way. do, huh? Yeah, and then I get Fuck. half my pay. That's bullshit. That is fucked up. Yeah. L- imagine you go to work one day. Yeah. Well, I guess this is your work, but let, let's say you work a job. You show up to work one day, and they're like, you know what? Bob did a better job today than you did. You get half your pay today. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? I get yeah, half it's my fucked pay. Up. I showed up to work. I did my work. I did my job. I cut my weight. I did my promos. I sold my tickets. I fought in a cage. Well, You're going to give me half my pay because Bob did a better job? I'm going to play I'm, devil's advocate here. I'm going to... I, you got to think there are some of these fighters that we see that kind of just, you know, perform to try to get the win. Like they, they don't like they go out there. They don't go for the finish or anything like that. They try to point their opponent or they just lay on their opponent or anything like that. I mean, I, it, yeah, because they need their bonus. So so they're just going for this win, but they're not getting a bonus, though. I mean, they're not going to get a performance bonus. Who cares? If they do that. So Most people they won't. just want. So you're saying they just want to get that win. Bellator doesn't give performance bonuses anyway. Oh, they don't give bonuses at all. They don't give a performance oh, shit. bonus. Yeah. That's fucked up. So it's Mo- either it's just win or PFL. Yeah, PFL. Yeah, you get actually. You get, doesn't PFL just give you a you set give, you, pay? No, no, they get fight and win also. They do. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, they're not very clear because they say, hey, you win the million dollars, you know, if, if you go the whole way. But they do say that they do pay. Do you know what they pay for PFL? Like, uh, Depends like on playoffs? every fighter is a little different. Every is fighter's it? negotiated on his own for the playoffs. Oh, okay. For not is, the playoffs beforehand. It is fucked the up. The playoffs, you, I think, is set. You gotta I think, think the playoff money's set. Mm-hmm. But I think the lead up to that isn't set. Well, baseball players have incentives too, if you think about it. And if they, if they hit X amount of home runs or X amount of hits, they have it in their contract where they'll, they'll get paid more. But I guess those are bonuses. So to win, that is a weird. I think everyone should get paid more, regardless. You know? Oh yeah, we, sh- we should be paid on par with. Manimal reminds me second. of this local used car dealership owner, bro. It's a good fucking deal while selling you a lemon. <laughs> Bro, it's a good deal. All right, buy this. I once sold uh, my best friend his own sandwich. No. As a kid. Yeah, what? No. no I, yeah, I what a deal. Terrible I'll tell you what, you say you guys are trolls, but these trolls are very insightful. Yeah, they're smart people. They're smart. Well, not really. You know, sometimes negative people can give you a lot of good insight. I got to say, I like that. to keep some negative people around me so that they can let me know if I'm fucking up. They might be, you know, a little exaggerating the fuck up, but they usually spot it first because they're so hypercritical. A lot of people. You know, people, when, you're, when you don't do anything, you have a lot of time to observe other people. Yes, absolutely. It's true. That's well, why I'm quiet 90% of the time. <laughs> she just lets it fly. I, this is an animal community. I mean, there are savages in here. But I got to say this. We built this community off of trolls and, and, and negative energy and everything like that, but it... It is the most loyal community that you can ever have, you know? So that's the trade-off. You kind of sell your soul, and then these people keep coming back and supporting you more and more as you grow. So it's a good group. As much as we all fuck with each other and bust each other's balls, that's what it's about. It's about ball busting, you know? Um, If they didn't like us, they wouldn't come back. So clearly they do like us over here. What do you guys in the chat? Do you like the Manimal? Hit us with the ones. Light it up with ones if you want you more Manimal. Light it up with ones. In that chat room I'm right now. Because I'm not leaving that couch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be stuck with me here. So we got we got a bunch of news stories to get to. Um, let's let's get into the news. Uh, would now here's the question, Manimal. I mean, we we already went an hour and five minutes. This is it's fucking flying by. Now it's flying by. I think we need to do a five hour Look show. Look at all the ones. The, the, oh, they fucking love you, Manimal. Look at this. The, there's ones all over the place. They want the Manimal. They're into it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. They uh, love them. That's what I like to see. 30,000. Look at that. Manimals all over the place in the chat. All right. Well, there you go. And how? Oh, guys, I- and don't forget, listen to uh, I'm on MMA and Beyond. Me and Ray Longo, the uh, probably one of the best coaches in the business. I mean, listen, homegrown talent. I don't think anyone could say the same, that they have two homegrown UFC champions. Not imported. Real shit. And, and at Laura MMA... Ray Longo also trains the most entertaining fighter in Bellator, the oldest winning featherweight in Bellator. I mean, what more do you want there? That's some good You got company. Aljo, the number one contender for the bantamweight strap. Oh, yeah. I tell you what. Quintus ranked top five. Marab got to be breaking into the top ten soon. 
Yeah, yeah. That kid's a that kid's a fucking machine. Everyone's high on him. So tell me more about yeah, I'm that. I'm high man. on him because the guy yeah. don't, he freaking is a machine. That's why we call him that. He'll get tired. He had a he had a nice fight his last fight and and the emotion after he won that fight was it was it was yeah, yeah, kind of chokes you up a little bit. I like that guy. Yeah, he's a great like a, guy. You can't you can't help but like him. Is this he your wife? In, is this yeah. your wife with a super chat over yeah. here? Your wife Tammy's coming in with a super chat. Wait, on that but one. don't read it yet. Let the let the uh, show read it. Okay, hold on. We're gonna let the show oh, read wow, this she over. Came in 15 bucks. <laughs> she's coming. She's coming in with a super chat. Let's see what she has to say. It as, should come in any second. Hold look on. Look at that. Oh, there it is. We gotta get Tammy on the chat. casting couch. Look at this. What she have? I love the manimal, and I love you guys for taking him tonight. <laughs> Kissing face. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking him tonight. It's like we're we're dog watching. It's like, like babysitting. <laughs> it's like yeah, you're animal sitting. <laughs> <laughs> we chained him to the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the deal. You do have a podcast, and and thank you for having us on with. Uh, oh, Mr. you guys Ray were Longo. a lot of fun. I got a lot of good feedback from my fans actually. Yeah? That's good stuff. Yeah, about having you guys on, and they loved the the training me and Jesse did. Good yeah. shit. I gotta do some more of that. Yeah. That's that's probably the most exciting CBD. thing I think about all of it. We gotta find a place CBD. around here. You know, I'm like ten minutes away from here. CBD. Yeah, CBD. yeah, that would be. But good. I never. I don't know if CBD. I ever want to open a gym again. CBD. So I don't think I want. We got a donation so much coming. Work. Yo, Ray like lives at the gym. Yeah, well, I, I like to be a free spirit. CBD. Well, we got a donation coming in. It's from Roberto oh, yeah. Hernandez. Well, Nick Diaz. All right, here we go. Oh, I like that fight, Nate and Anthony Pettis coming up. That's oh, that's a, a bomber. I like that one. So Roberto Hernandez says, "Hi guys, you guys are great." Hey, Woo! thank you very much for the donation. Wonderful, wonderful. Appreciate that. All the donations tonight. Thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. Um, man, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, Nate Diaz versus uh, um, what's it called Pettis is fire. That's a yeah, fire fight. That's a great fight. Do you think winner Yo, gets that Connor? whole card is that whole card is fire. <laughs> yeah. Cormier, Neil Sick, right? Right around the corner. Then it's uh, that's August seventeenth, right? Yeah. Next week. Right around the corner. Then it's gonna it's, be a um, fire. Pettis, what's the other fight? There's yeah, I'll pull one. up the card right now. There's another good fight on there. Well, this is this what? weekend. Is what? it Yo Romero and Polo Costa? Yeah, Co that's right. Costa's that's on right. it. Right, yo, that's Hold a good a card. I'm telling you. This card over here. I mean, do you think that Daniel Cormier could repeat? Do you think he can pull it off? Yeah. I, I think, think so, Daniel huh? Cormier is the, the best fighter who's not on PEDs. It's crazy, right? He's 40 years old, and it looks like he hasn't even lost a step. The guy, the guy's got... He's better at heavyweight, too. I think the only time I would want to see him fight Jones again is at heavyweight. Here's my super... I don't think he should ever go back down to 205. Oh, I He's agree. He's better as a heavyweight. He, He's I'm, undefeated as a heavyweight. I made this prediction. I want to know if, if you... Uh, what do you think about this? I said that John uh, that DC will beat Stipe, right? I, I said he beat Stipe the first time, but he will beat Stipe, and he guaranteed a fight against John Jones at heavyweight. He will win that fight. He will beat John Jones at heavyweight. He's never lost at heavyweight, and he'll ride off into the sunset. That what do you think? Great. I think that I, I would love to see that for him. I like DC. I've always been a DC fan. I think the fans at first just didn't understand the guy, mm -hmm. but now I think he's grown on everyone. But I love DC. He's one of my faves. All right. I mean, I think he's one of the he's one of the top five best pound for pound fighters ever. It's great, right? And he's a man's man. He's he's like the everyday guy. He's that frumpy, heavy guy that goes in there. Um, hey, he listen, looks he like a normal. Exactly have the best genetics for looks. No, he looks like a, he looks like a normal dude. That's what I like about him. He's not I shredded. Thought, I, yeah, you know, I thought he was delivering my uh, my Amazon package the other day, <laughs> but I realized it wasn't DC actually. Oh, it wasn't him? Uh, no, it wasn't actually. It looked mm. close though. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was AC. It wasn't DC. Mm. Yeah, it was close. It was wonderful, close. Wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. All right, you gonna sit in with the news? I'm here. Come on, let's do it. All right, guys. here we go. We're going to play the news music right now. Jesse. Now you can't fucking get rid of me. I'm sleeping here tonight. <laughs> All right, MMA holes unite. We're going to do the news. And then if we get through the news quick enough, we'll take a couple of calls. And we're here with the Manimal. Jesse, you ready for some news? Hi, uh, yes. One for one. Okay, here we go. Let's go over to the breaking news section. We have the MMAholes.com. Go over to the MMAholes.com where we're showing the news. We gather it from all over the world. And JBH will be reading some stories. You're going to get thoughts from... The holes, the manimal, and let's do this, Jesse. What do we got? Well, we already sort of discussed Chris Cyborg leaving the UFC. Uh, Dana White had some a few choice words to say after after his Tuesday night contender series last night uh, during his interview. And Chris Cyborg is quote very happy to have finally left the UFC and say said that Dana White had some unexplained anger against her in a social media post. 
She put, I'm very happy God is faithful. I finished era UFC. I did my last fight. That means no one released me. And this is in reference to Dana White saying that he was going to contact his lawyer and have her uh, legally released. You got a donation coming in. This is from Mr. Vlad. What does Vlad have to say? I bet Manimal gives his friends the best advice. Bro, you put the condom on. Right. Then midway tear the top off, pull the head through and go raw. <laughs> Is that a true story? <laughs> no, for, no. You just take it. You just take it to count. Take the count off. You won't even notice. You say you slipped out. You pull the rubber off. That's how you do it. Fuck that. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. All right, back to the sideboard story. <laughs> she continued on. Vlad, to I gotta say, educate you. <laughs> Uh, she said, together we had ERA, Elite XC, uh, Strike Force, Invicta FC, and UFC all were successful. We'll be starting a new ERA soon. News, I'm excited to know where we will or where will be our next ERA. The Cyborg Nation was already giant before the, the UFC ERA even trying to delete us. Imagine now that we will be in the boat. Okay, Manimal on Decca is donating. Where's Manimal on Thoughts on Colby Elite D1 folk style wrestling compared to D2 Bar Mooseman. <laughs> D2 Scrubs. He already gave his... All right. What are your thoughts on the wrestling? First wrestling. D1 versus D2 Usman. I, I don't th I think the wrestling is going to negate itself. There you go. I think I think both their wrestling is going to be... You have to remember, MMA wrestling is different. Right? So you could have... Like, listen, I'm not the best wrestler. I never, I never wrestled in high school. I grew up in Brooklyn. There's no wrestling there. In the hood, they think wrestling is gay. So there was no wrestling in my growing up for me. And uh, I wrestle against other wrestlers. If we just wrestled, if we went to college and just wrestled, they'd be taking me down all over the place. But once I start throwing punches at their face, then I might take them down a little easier. And once I start throwing to break their arms, it's a little different. So same thing for MMA wrestling. I think when you, when you level it, I think they're about equal in the wrestling department. Whoever gets off first, I'd be curious to see. I, I would like to see a nice grappling battle between the two. Mm -hmm. Personally, I love a grappling exchange. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I love jujitsu. I love grappling. So I'd love to see some scintillating scrambles. Okay, question. Oh, yo, what happened to that fucking joint? Oh, yeah, Pulse. Uh, uh, Are they on here? I, I think so. He yeah, Pulse, you in the chat? He wants to light up your joint. Let us know if you're... Uh, Actually, we just give him a, a cup for. Hold on a second. Isn't our, yeah, hold on. <laughs> is this safe to do with three other neighbors in the complex? <laughs> we should crack a window. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, if Pulse is in the chat, oh there he is. He says, "Oh, Vlad, wait, hold on, wait to see what he says." He wants to light it up. So, uh, yeah, he says, "Light it up." All right, Pulse. You're scared, Vlad. I told him, "Alea yak the ass." Do you know what that means, Vlad? Vlad, you know what that means? I told them, Alea act ass, Julius Caesar. It means roll the dice. All right? They were nervous about this. If it was going to get them too fucked up. <laughs> but I said, you can't get too fucked up. All right? I All fight right. in the cage. The most dangerous thing. Yeah, They're door. telling me about danger. I could have got killed in that cage well, in Madison I'll Square Garden. Door. Huh? Danger. Close the door so it doesn't go out into no, the rest sorry, of the house. I right. fight in the cage. What do you think? This is dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> no one's trying to kill me right here. So you need one problem. Where's the lighter? Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah, we got to get a lighter. I would help. I have to light this off so the here's stove? the deal. We'll get it. <laughs> Is that what I got to do here? Do I light this off the stove? Holy shit. You guys are not smokers, huh? Huh? You guys are not smokers, huh? No. Just, do you work out regular? Yeah, we go to the, we go to the gym. Where? Oh, over here at LA Fitness. You at LA Fitness over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went today. Yeah, but, uh. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to give you a little strength and conditioning program then. Yeah? A little more suited to how your conditioning would have to be for MMA. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donation coming in. All right, he's going to die on the couch. We got a donation. Roberto Hernandez. You don't get tested, John. Oh, here we go. Get About getting tested. Well, I'm not in. First of all, when you're at a competition, you don't get tested for recreational drugs. There you go. So I do get tested, Just yeah. That, uh, but out of. So yeah, I'm thing. clean in competition. They test for everything, but out of competition, no testing for recreational drugs. So, like, let's say you're a UFC fighter, and we go to Vegas, and you don't have a, a fight coming up or anything, and USADA comes and tests you, and you just blow in lines of coke off Lucas titties, you're fine. 
So yeah, I am drug tested. I'm clean. I'm like the only guy my age who's not on fucking something. Is there such thing as like a secondhand high? Is that is that a thing? Well, we'll find out yeah. in a second. There so is? you never smoked weed? Let me. When I was yeah, in high did. school, yeah. So here's but, the deal. Uh, I gotta I gotta let the people in the chat know. I stopped. Do you get paranoid? Yeah, I got paranoid the first time around, and then I tried Spice, which is that synthetic weed shit. No, that's worse. Yeah, I got fucked up, and I'll never smoke it again. Well, we have no idea what you're smoking right now. Uh, Pulse Resurrected, if you could say what, uh, don't Bogart the Dutchie pass it around. I wish they wanted <laughs> to, but they didn't want to smoke. That's, that's old manimal. That's old manimal right there. All right, <laughs> so this is I, I'm smoking it for them. There you go. It's like a, it turned into a Joey Diaz cut podcast I'm right like now. I'm like the stunt, like the stunt mouth. You don't get paranoid about what? When you smoke, you don't get paranoid. No, I don't get paranoid about anything. Oh. In life, in general. Like, what's yeah. going to happen? I'm going to die? Big deal. That's my fear. I mean, the man f- yeah, so fights right. in a cage, for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I'm, I, me and death are very... I'm a little rough. All right, here we go. We're back reconnected. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, OBS, the uh, software that we used Dana to stream. Dana White says it was a nightmare working with Cyborg. I'm sure it was a nightmare working with him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure right, I click that back visual. on. All right, so now what we're going to do here, as Manimal is smoking on the uh, Pulse Resurrected uh, Reefer... We're going to get back. I, I think it's, what do you think? Uh, it's pretty good, actually. Yeah, this My is. Uh, rope, where's it's, Pulse? It's lip? mostly CBD. Yeah. It's fifteen percent CBD. It's only one percent THC. Ah, so it's got. It's very low THC. This is actually more therapeutic than anything. Yeah. It's CBD. So you can't get high off of it. Okay, well, I'm not going to say you can't get high, but you're not going to get that high. Yeah. Well, if it's one percent THC, it's that, very low. That means there's like nothing in there. Yeah, like you have, like what I buy is usually twenty percent plus THC. Right. Like regular weed. So this is very low THC. Oh. So, but the CBD has a lot of therapeutic effects. Right. Yeah, I love CBD. What do you think about CBD? I, t- you know, I have a CBD sponsor, CB, uh, CMG CBD. I know you guys have a different one. Everyone has a CBD sponsor now, yeah. but I think there's a lot of good benefit to it. I think that the problem with most people with anything that you come across is that once you find one thing that works a little bit, mm-hmm. they go all in like it's a panacea. Yeah, f- and I don't think it's good to do that. It's a tool, like every other tool. In training camp, I found good effect from the gummies, and I had a roll-on that was good for impact injuries. And I take that in addition. Even with the roll-on, I also use a magnesium spray. Magnesium helps for injuries also, so I'll take that on top of it too. And it's not just one thing that's going to solve every every problem you have, but I think as a tool in your toolbox, it's good to have. You know, I have a toolbox of all different things I can utilize. CBD is one of the tools in the toolbox. There you go. There you go. The manimal has spoken about the CBD. Let hey, me know in the chat. I'm wiser than you think. <laughs> Let me know in the chat what you think about CBD. I give good advice. There you Pull go. Pull out. You take the condom off. <laughs> hey, wonderful, wonderful. Raw. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. New York in full effect here tonight. Brooklyn in the house. Throwing it down your throat. Let Queens, me know in the chat. Arizona right there. All over the place. <laughs> yeah. Take that. By the way, we have a. This is a, the audio for the Monday and Wednesday shows. Goes on a podcast as well. We put it on uh, Spotify. Not nah, Spotify. Hello. Uh, Podbean and iTunes. So um, if you want to hear the audio versions of these shows, Podbean and iTunes is where you can hear the manimal and the holes. All right. Let's oh, get. Good. I'll listen to it on iTunes tomorrow. There you go. Uh, get uh, back into the news. Let's get back in there and we'll rattle through some stories for the people so we can get that going over here. Anything else with that cyborg story? Uh, no. Basically, she's just saying that uh, she said Dana didn't want to give me the rematch, only a six fight contract in the UFC. Unfortunately, doesn't have girls in my division. I die in the UFC without fighting and still being defamed. So the best option would be see other promotions that have my division where I could fight more often. Who knows? Maybe one day Amanda and I will rematch. No one knows what tomorrow will bring. God's the one who makes my plans all right there we go jesse what do you think of uh, this situation yeah uh it's tough because i know that the uh the production team is is predominantly responsible for um what happened on that video the whole like the, the captions being doctored and everything else that wasn't cyborg's fault she has an entire editing team so i can't blame cyborg for that but the back and forth and the taunting each other, it, I think both of them are at fault for it. And it kind of sucks that it ended this way because I wanted to see the rematch. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we're going to see it now because Dana oh, got salty, like quick. Chef. We got uh, Jew who swings you snakes. Bo- you both find that rematch compelling, right? Oh, I love it. you do too. Wait, hold on one second. Renzo's on 37th in NYC. They want to know uh, what years did you train at Henzo Gracie uh, 30, what, 30? Seven. And uh, and you NYC? guys know me from back in the day. 2000. 2001 to maybe 2000. I, I, so I went to John Jay. So I went to Henzo's while I was going to school 
at John Jay. So I trained there all the time for like four years in college, like 2000 to 2004. Hmm. And I still go to Henzo's every Wednesday. Hmm. I went like to you, go to 7.30 a.m. class at Henzo's. You went to school with my, with my brother. I went there this morning. I went there this morning. My brother went to John Jay. Dana, her teachers. Year. I like Dana, her class. Hmm. That's funny. Small world. You, you, uh, when did you graduate? John Jay? Uh, yeah. 2004? I wonder when. I think it was around when my brother graduated. That's freaking funny. Really, I went for forensic went psychology. Same. Forensic. I worked at the oh, forensic criminal, psychology. He was criminal justice. Mm. I worked world. at the G building for a while, actually. Oh, for a year. I'll ask him if. Uh, you don't even know there. what that is. The G building was the forensic psych unit. That's where the, the G's hang out. No, it was the criminally insane unit oh. at Kings County Hospital. So hmm. I worked with the criminally insane for a year. Uh. I got some stories from that. Woo! And now it all makes sense. <laughs> I, you know what? I, everyone thinks I was actually a patient. <laughs> I don't know what, why do we think that, I right? Don't know why what you, you, you know what's funny? Like this is completely irrelevant and off topic. I had like I've had this severe sinus headache all fucking day. And I know I didn't take any of that. Like maybe it's psychological, maybe it's just in my head. But like I feel like my sinuses started clearing up the moment I started smelling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it did. But I, it could be psychological because I didn't really. I didn't well, really it is smoke CBD. It does have healing benefits. Yeah, don't yeah. underestimate that. Just healed I think your it sinuses. Might be in my head, but I just noticed now, like it, it opened up. She used to hate the smell of secondhand uh, marijuana. Weed, yeah. yeah, she she hated. It. It. Now I, what's I'm going sm- on? Well, I you're a believer. No, I think uh, I'm starting my my mental. I'm getting mentally stronger. Like I, I'm a highly anxious person. We should take him to the casino after this and and, and get high and, and stop escalators like we did the other night. We had an, I had an edible for the first time and decided to stop escalators. I'll pick it up some edibles if you need. Oh, all right. So this is the guy we go to. That's it. Boom. All right. So what's it? So uh, you only are tested when you're in like a training camp for or recreational like drugs. Hmm. So like you what can't be shooting. T- testosterone right when you're at a camp what if you're on a prescription uh, medication so from a hold doctor? on we gotta oh, then you have to tell them and here we go with fine. ufc okay. so they got a question Do you remember the six five blonde dominatrix emily six fine bl- six five blonde dominatrix emily do you remember <laughs> from what? from the gym i guess from the gracie gym do you remember a six five blonde dominatrix emily was she um a women's NBA player in Canada. Hmm. So there was a tall blonde. Oh my God! This girl's a giant. So that's probably her. Giant. So this guy somehow he knows the people that you've trained with. I guess I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, Small that way. was a unique time back then. It was above a methadone clinic, Henzo's. Uh huh. So fucking crackheads would come up into the place, just like in the school. So you would walk in, like the elevator doors open, and bam, you were in the gym. Hmm. The mats were right there. Dudes were rolling around. The locker room was right there, and it was like the Wild West over there. I think uh, Rodrigo used to teach like the afternoon, so I knew all the guys. Matt, Sarah, taught there also at Henzo's at that time, and so did his brother, Nick Sarah, taught the afternoons. Nick Sarah, talk about out of his mind, yo, it was supposed to be a noon class, and I made my school schedule with a big gap in a day so I could train. Oh, wow. Right? So I went early in the morning. That's hardcore, man. And had a big break like five hours so I could train hard and eat and take a nap and then go back at night till like nine ten. And, uh, and Nick Sarah used to teach in a day. His 12 o'clock class, he started at one thirty in the afternoon. I'm like, man, you're really throwing my timing off over here. <laughs> hey, I got a pizza. He would come in with like a full pie. Oh, I stopped and got a pizza. What the f- you guys supposed to teach at noon? You could never imagine that happening now, right? Yeah, to no. have a school that ran that way. But now yeah, it's and then Henzo, I mean, he would have guys sometimes stay from Brazil and they would sleep there. You know, they had a guy like move in there for like a week. He oh, hold on. All stuff. We got a donation here from Frank Bavon. And he's coming on Ronda. Look at this. Oh, uh, I like Ronda. Here we go. <laughs> you know what? I wish they would have handled Ronda a little nicer too. <laughs> you wasted her talent in uh, for UFC. Come on, Ronda! You ever Who come the on fuck Ronda? is her manager? <laughs> Who's Ronda's manager? Twelve dollars. Yo, come what'd you Ronda. make this show? Come on, Ronda. Is this your best-selling show? Oh, forget it. Yo, donate. <laughs> Here we go, Listen, Frank Levine. How about this Has he next? Have fought anybody who he knew was using? Have you fought anybody that you knew was using? Oh, I... shit! I assume every guy is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think about it. 
Yeah. So what do you think about that? Uh, like drug use, steroids, all that fun stuff. Like, hey, what do you listen, think about you guys? You still got to put the work in, man. I mean, it gives you everything gives you a plus or it could give you a minus. So, but let's say you do steroids, right? It gives you a plus. It's not everything. It gives you a little something, but maybe I got a little something that you don't have. There you go. I, you you were know, saying- I got some shit that you never seen ever. I have some techniques that no one's ever seen. So you don't know. <laughs> I do. I got some, I'm telling you, I believe. So who you don't know. I could even it up hey. if you're on the source. You were saying on uh, MMA and Beyond, you were saying how um, Bellator's uh, drug testing thing is nothing like uh, USADA, right? No. If you could explain uh, to this audience over here, what, how does Bellator drug test you guys? You, well, listen. First, the State Athletic Commission tests you. Okay. And then they test you day of the fight, really. Unless you're on contract, I don't think you're tested out of. So if, if you're like me, I'm fight to fight right now. And so I only get tested when I'm at the fight. Huh. And uh, New York State Athletic Commission is strict, though. Like, I didn't smoke weed for eight weeks. And my wife was doesn't not it, happy about that. <laughs> not like- fucking happy. <laughs> Tammy, are you still on? Because she was not happy because I'm kind of a dick. Oh, I'm aggressive, really? a little more aggressive, not as chill. Yeah. I'm hungry because I'm also cutting weight. So I'm not high. Oh, so he's and hungry. I'm, so I'm not high and I'm cutting weight. So those eight weeks are tough on my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel for her. I booked a trip to Disney. My wife loves Disney. So when I took the fight, we booked the trip. I booked a trip to Disney for afterwards so that no matter what, you know. Make it up to her. Make it up to her. Because yeah, I know it's tough. Listen, it's very <laughs> difficult to be around the fighter. She's in yeah, the chat. She I says, bet. she says, I did not sign up for a hangry, sober manimal. <laughs> when she met me, I was a pothead. Yes. Yeah, oh, man. How's Tammy, you're the best. Do you like this better, Tammy? Like. I always want Tammy to come on a podcast, but she's not. You know how I'm outgoing? Yeah. My wife and I are the opposites, but in the best way possible. Yeah. Okay. You so balance like, each other out. We, yeah. yeah. So if we didn't have the moon, the earth would spin way too fast and right. we would all die. <laughs> so because you have the moon, which is totally different than the earth, it balances the earth out. So that's what my wife is like me. Yeah. So Tammy, do you like doing this better? Like typing into a show I'm on because I like this. <laughs> That's an easier way to Because my wife is an English teacher. Yeah. So she's a writer. Maybe she likes to write better. <laughs> mm. How long are you guys together for? That dude says Manimal is the goat. Like an actual goat. You. Like, eh. You're like the new uh, goat She here. says, did he just call me the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I could be the moon if you want. You know what we gotta do? We have Hold a up. second channel called Not the MMA Holes. That's a channel where I, we should drag Do you want on. me to call you the Earth? That's kind of a little too uh, I, I mean, couples retreat. It makes sense because you know, like the moon is calm, and if she's the calm one, and he's, yeah, he's spinning out of control, you know, like yeah, it she makes has to sense. calm me down. She's how does me she? Down. How does she slow you down? Is the question I, I noticed with uh, Ray Longo? He just he just cut you off. Like how how does he's your like, wife stop talking? How does you, how, does, how does your wife do it? What, what, like, what's her trick? Does, does she just let it like burn out, or does she have like a like a safe word? She sends me here. <laughs> <laughs> Go do the podcast. Yo, when are you gonna smoke weed? When are you gonna train? <laughs> when are you show. gonna? Oh no, we like to go to movies together though. Yeah, we went and seen. Oh, we seen Hobbs and Shaw last night. Oh, good action. Think? Good don't, action. Don't, don't talk about it. Shh, no, no, but I'm just gonna tell you, it's good action. <laughs> good action. Yeah. Good variety of action. And it doesn't take itself serious, right? It's it's like a fun, like, action... It was fun to me. I had yeah, a good yeah. time. Okay, no spoilers. It's I, long. That's two hours and 20 about, minutes. I don't Is like really? talking about new movies. Two hours and 20 minutes for an action movie? Yeah, it was. It was but it was entertaining. Here's my question. It was very entertaining. Is it like... Jesse, the, I'm not going to spoil the movie. Is it like I'm the old like school Schwartz? I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just saying it was entertaining. I, there's always that one person that's it's like, crazy. I'm not going to spoil it. And then all of a sudden, it gets spoiled somehow. At the somehow. end, The Rock dies. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Uh, is there? Is it like um, the old school '90s Schwarzenegger type movies, like those action movies? Did it have that vibe to it at all? Like with a new twist, or is it its own with thing? With a new twist, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because I you love know those what movies. it was almost like last action hero. Oh, it's the best. I love that shit. Yeah. Oh, so then maybe I have to see it. All right. Anyway, we're getting a little sidetracked. We got more what news? are we doing now? Let's get into. Come on, we got to talk some MMA. We did it. Actually, you know what's funny? I think when we mix this together we don't talk about MMA we just bullshit like when we went on your show the we same thing we're just like MMA. hey what's going we're on we're talking Pizza. about MMA but not actual fights like I'm yeah. talking about Henzo's <laughs> back in the day yeah that's true that's man, true man there were girls at Henzo's they used to get paid to be dominatrices like a lot of money wait so wait they what would learn the skill and, and then, then beat dudes up oh that's great and get paid like 400 bucks an hour this oh chat would love God. that 
They'd be into that. Jess, Jess can you imagine? Oh, you make a lot of <laughs> no, thank you. 400 bucks an hour. They ask us to do Chatterbait, for God's sakes. That's yeah. even better. I mean, you listen, I struggle. I try to get a buck 25 an hour, and it's tough. <laughs> and I mean, I'm giving out good knowledge. Yeah. What do you do outside of MMA? Do you have another I job? Coach. Or, are you, so coaching is, that's it. That's that's where you're making your money. Yeah, I coach. I, I start early. Tomorrow, my first client, 4.45 a.m. I, I get up early like a champion. That's awesome. Though. You're doing what you love. It's great. I love my life. That's I great. live a great life. I noticed yeah. someone in the chat, and I'm just going to just segue into this. Uh, Frank Yeager is dropping a bantamweight. Yeah, oh, I, I want to talk about that. Okay. This sounds like a complete problem Why? for the funk master. What's going on here? All right. Let me tell you. Yeah. Read this story because I, I want to know your opinion on this whole situation. This this is... Wonderful. I don't know. All right. I mean, so, I think it's uh, right for Frank. Frank Yeager needs six months before his next fight, right? I don't know. Is he medically suspended? Uh I would assume so, right? He got beat up. So. so Ali Abdelaziz told ESPN he has informed the UFC that Edgar's next bout will be at bantamweight, ideally before the end of the year. He said, quote, we have already started discussing Frankie's bantamweight well, debut. Uh, Abdelaziz told ESPN we're hoping it will be at U UFC 244 on November 2nd at Madison Square Garden. See, everyone wants to fight at the Garden. But 100% Frankie's next fight will be at 135 pounds. Uh, it feels like a new beginning for us. I love the kid, and I feel it will be safer for him at 135. He always does better when he fights guys his own size. When he's fighting guys with similar height and range, sometimes they still weigh more than him, but I feel like it's an even playing field. Okay. So I, I, I do believe you see that? if he goes Everyone to Bantam Weight. You know what yeah, feels better than winning at the Garden? He wants to be like you. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what happens. Or... <laughs> he's trying to be the man. He's ripping off Maybe your style. Maybe getting married to my wife. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. So, all right. Now, I do believe him going uh, to bantamweight probably is the right move. But doesn't this throw a whole monkey wrench into this whole situation now? Like, like the <sighs> funk, the funk master is there. Aljo needs to get the title shot. I don't care what anyone says because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, hundred percent that if Munoz would have knocked out Aljo, he would have got the title shot. So, f them, give Aljo his title shot. I agree. Mm -hmm. He he beat Jimmy Rivera, who was ranked five. He beat Munoz, who I know they would have gave the shot to if he would have won. Right. Give him the shot. Like, what are you doing? What, Stop it. What do you think of an interim belt? He's ready. He's ready. Colby. The interim belt. Oh, hold on a second. We got a Colby Covington donation from Eric Melton. This is Eric Melton coming in. All right. Let's see what Eric Melton has to say. All right. Did this guy win the KFC belt? Oh. Where did you all get this bum? He looks like one of the characters off of Mike Tyson Punch Out. <laughs> oh, that's true. I'd be Manimal here on Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I loved that game. Dude, uh, what was the guy? Soda Popinski. Oh, no, there was. A, yeah, I could be like Soda Popinski or uh, the Bull Dude. That guy was great, too. What about. All right, so let's go into this picture then. Uh, on uh, you were telling the story beforehand. All right, would have it? Would this be your? Uh, oh God! <laughs> Why do you want to torture me now? <laughs> would that Why be the picture of Punch Out? <laughs> Why do you want to torture me? That's uh, old, old John Benedici. Let's get so into that I'm story in a sec. Hold on, Mr. Manimo. In my homeland Slovenia, it is very impolite to lay on couch like porn star, rubbing hairy legs and touching feet with hands scratching balls, then touching water bottle and face in front of camera and checking out Moss's butt from behind. <laughs> That's from uh, Melania Trump. How about eating my foot? <laughs> He's fucking losing it. The manimal's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> if you're just jumping in, this is John the Manimal Beneduce. Oh, yeah, guys. He's I live with us. a little us. wild, but... I mean, my nickname's Manimal, not accountant. You know? I did, I'm congruent. As he lights up again. There he goes. Why not? There's the Manimal. So, yeah, tell the story from this. Oh, this is so actually listen, pretty funny. I'm the first person to make an MMA cardio DVD. Right. MMA cardio DVD. So, think Tai Bo. Okay. But MMA moves. Jab, cross, take down, body, body, head, elbow, knee, uh, triangle choke, throw the triangle from your guard. So I did this five five-minute rounds. I had a beginner one, an advanced one, and I sold a good amount of them. I'm not going to say how much because we're live. But I sold a good amount of them. 
It didn't work out as planned. Let's put the mic by your face. Oh, you it go. didn't work out as planned. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Sorry, I'm we looking heard you. at it. You got me thrown off. You're taking me back. <laughs> That's 2008. I think I look better now, though, personally. There you go. Yeah, Maybe. you look good now. I think I look good now. Personally. I tell you, the beard is is the best thing that ever happened to us guys, right? I mean, oh, listen, the beard, the bald head. Everything. Yeah. Best thing ever for me. I think I look like mature, yeah. veteran. I, I really grew into my character. Man, girls don't have this this option of beard. You know, it oh. sucks when they have to put makeup on. We could just throw a beard on our face. You just put the beard on. Right? Yeah. Well, males are the better looking of any species anyway. We just Yikes. That's true. We just don't think that because we're guys. So we always think the female's more attractive. But if you were an alien and you came to Earth, yeah. you would be like, oh, those girls are really plain looking, but those dudes, you know, <laughs> look at their beards, their hair, like a, like a lion. The male lion has the mane. Yeah. And like a duck, the, the mallard has the green head. A peacock, the male has the feathers. Every species you wow, see Wow, you make this. a good point. Yeah. Every species you see this. The same for the male human. The only reason it's not like that is because the male human desires the female of the species. Because look at every other animal. They're like, that plain bitch is so hot. <laughs> that and we're going to fight to the death <laughs> over that. That plain bitch is Because she's so going to make a great mom. You see that plain girl? She's gonna make a great mom. <laughs> you know, and that's and they fight to the death over it. So oh, that's yeah. my opinion. Oh my okay. God. Well, uh, we, man, we're learning a lot tonight, Jesse. We yeah. are we are learning a lot. This plain is a, bitches. This is some experience over here. Let's get back into this Frankie thing over here because yeah, I, do I mean wanna... that's pretty much it. If yeah, if you want to talk more about it, all right. They, they just... So so now. Who, what happens here? He's not a big dude. He could make 35 probably. I would imagine, yeah. But I don't know why he'd want to. Why does he want to suffer so much? He wants well, to win the 35 pound title. Yeah, uh, that's got to be it. Now, do he they wants to throw? Be a two division champ. And do if they he can't th do it? And if he can't do it at 45, he'll do it at 35. Do they throw the interim strap? Okay, at a. Oh shit! Hold on a second. Trump's hair is on fire. Hair is on fire. Oh my God! Trump's hair is on fire. Trump's hair is on fire. <laughs> what a song. Trump is on fire. It's Roberto Hernandez coming in. Trump See, Mark Jackson said he saw fire. me on FBI files. <laughs> Mark, that was a long time ago, bro. All right, this is Statue from Roberto Hernandez. limitations is done. Mr. Trump has a 66K wig. A 66K wig. You think so? Wow. Is that a wig? I think that's real. It's a real wow. comb over. Anyway, thank you, Roberto Hernandez. All right, so do you think that they're going to throw an interim strap out there? Um, for this bantamweight with Henry Cejudo sidelined, and he, if he comes back, when he does come back, it's gonna be at 125. So now it looks like there's going to be an interim strap. Would Frankie Edgar deserve a shot at the interim belt after he just? He needs lost? one fight at 135 first. Yeah. So now, here's the question: You have to have one fight at 135 before you could challenge. I mean, I guess you could just go up and challenge. The UFC is such bullshit anyway. Such you don't even know. Anyway, so what do you think then, Funk? Versus Marais too. Would you like to see that? Um, for the interim strap, Madison Square Garden. Would there be a possibility for something like that? I like that fight. I right. think Aljo has the has the right stuff to be victorious in that rematch. Uh -huh. What? Why is Jesse laughing? What? You had this look on your face. It was very Joe Rogan esque going on, <laughs> like like Cause now I'm in, you know, I'm into it. Like that, that's what I get. I could joke more about me fighting than my teammates. Like oh, the man. blunt is kicking. So, uh, what you, what's your review of this? Uh, the joint yeah, now. Yeah, does it make you is high? It, or is you it good? Or? A little bit. I feel relaxed though. Yeah. yeah, I do feel relaxed. But not like extremely high or anything like that. No. 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 Hmm. There you go. He's in his zone. I tell you, what, I do feel in the zone too. Cause I got my alpha brain. Oh, there you go. Tell us more about alpha brain. We'll probably reach out to them too. They got uh, some good on stuff. It, um. On it, I mean, they sponsor the MMA and Beyond podcast. They really need to throw us some more money since I've been promoting the fuck out of them. Uh, on it, if you're listening, Aubrey Marcus, come on, I was at your event. Like, throw me some dough. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I was like a used car salesman. Oh no, so I've been using Alpha Brain, dude. I took it in uh, backstage before the fight. I take it when I spar. I just think it makes me just a little more focused. And let me tell you, every percent counts. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, you add up all the pluses. And I want to come out with a plus 20. You know, I love Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm always thinking about rolling the dice in there. No D&D? &D? Yeah, well, Chris, yeah, I mean, no, I know of it. Chris, but no. I walked in on a tournament once and I started laughing. Jesse, I, you're too young. <laughs> I walked in. They have like fucking tournaments. Have you jumped into them things? Like I went into the store. Well, my once. wife is the dungeon master. Oh, is she? 
Well, <laughs> that's that's the bedroom stuff. Oh, that's well, that's after. We could go talk. into a million places with this one. You know, since he brought up the uh, the alpha male, let's jump into our um, alpha brain. Oh alpha, yeah, we got alpha brain. Uh, alpha male. Hello. Alpha male. Now I think I'm getting secondhand. Uh, let's get into our sponsors real quick before we do forget. Got to give our shout. Let's go to Betty Asai over here. Shout out to Betty Asai. Jesse, what do we got? Oh. Yeah, on the tone by Aubrey Marcus, DB Cooper. Aubrey Marcus is great, actually. I did a weekend camp with him. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. We got a uh, sponsor to, to hit real quick. This is Bet DSI. Just because you're not in Vegas doesn't mean you can't bet on MMA and UFC. Bet DSI offers online wagering and has been paying winners for 20 years. Use the link in the description with promo code MMAHOLE, all one word, for up to 100% bonus match as well as $25 as a welcome bonus today. Bet DSI also offers betting options for everything, including NFL, NCAA football, NBA, NHL, UFC, and all the major sports, politics, rally, TV, esports. Virtually everything. We play there ourselves and recommend Bet DSI if you want to add some excitement to the fights or any other sports you are watching. Once again, go to Bet DSI with the link in the description using promo code MMAHOLE and get this limited time 100% bonus offer as well as $25 as a welcome bonus to make some extra cash on the sports you know and love. It's only a game until you bet it at Bet DSI. We got to send the manimal over to Bet DSI. I'm telling you, man, best way to place a bet over there. Check I have a out. superpower. Yes. Do you want to know what it is? Yes. What is it? So I have a superpower when it comes to betting on fights. Okay. Whoever I bet on will always lose. <laughs> Is that how it works? So if you want someone to lose, let me know. All right. So there you go. So whoever, yeah. So I work the opposite. I have the opposite luck in fighting. Well, now we know. Now we know to That's go against. That's why I tell you what. I didn't bet on Sarah's fight. Yeah. Because I didn't want to bet on GSP. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to bet on Matt because I didn't want him to lose. I wanted him to win. So, uh, so I make sure I don't bet on my friends' fights ever. That's a good power to have. Yeah. Uh, we have another sponsor to get into. This is Timeless CBD. Timeless CBD sees a gap in the industry between quality and affordability. All of Timeless CBD's products are carefully handmade at their facility. Each and every batch is third-party tested. Visit Timeless CBD with the link in the description and get your hands on only the best CBD products such as full spectrum oils, gummies, pain salves, freezes, BCAAs, and more. Use promo code MMAHOLE, all one word, for up to 20% off of your entire order. We use Timeless CBD on a daily and we haven't felt this good in years. We recommend Timeless CBD to anyone seeking treatment for numerous conditions. Once again, visit Timeless CBD with the link in the description and use promo code MMAHOLE and get up to 20% off of your entire Entire purchase. All right. Shout out to Pro Timeless CBD, Bet DSI. Oh. A donation. Special. Holy shit. I've got a special face. Wait, hold on. Attention is short. Bust out of your space. Where is mine in a special there is. place? Can't me. I'm from an alien race. Special face. Oh my god, this is the $11 special, special face donation. Face. Special face. So this is Lee Wee, well, Lee W, 1916. Guys, I think this guy is fucking fantastic. Brooklyn's oh, finest. Can Brooklyn's we keep him, finest. please? Thank you. The perfect time to drop my first donation. Keep on groaning, MM holes. Wow, look at that donation. And I'm sorry that the beginning got fucked up because you, we're two things playing. But what do you think about that? You should appreciate Brooklyn. There you go, Brooklyn in the house. That's right. Uh, you know that guy was like in his country they don't do this they don't do this in my country either but when you're in Brooklyn you do what you want uh, I saw I saw you rubbing the mic on your wrinkles again yeah it feels tell, great tell the audience about that. this so I like to <laughs> The wrinkles on my forehead. I'm not a kid. Before the right. show, he's I like, to, he's right. rubbing his wrinkles with the mic. <laughs> Any guest that comes here after Aljo, if you come on this show after, <laughs> fuck it. That's how I roll. My bad. I don't Hopefully know. they disinfect this mic. If they don't, I mean, we train together and sweat on each other, so it's not going to be any grosser than that. <laughs> I mean, what we do in the gym on a daily basis is about as gross as you could get. It's 113 fucking degrees in there. We're grappling with other sweaty men. It's the grossest thing you ever do. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking of Algebrain Sterling, when he came on, uh, there was a guy donating, or a girl, we're not sure, as Big Ebony Honey Buns, and was just talking about his BBC the whole time. And Algebrain just took it like a champ, man. He laughed it off. And Did just... he say how big it was? Because I can't talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> but if you heard Maybe. him say it on the show, you can. That's true. We should have you and Aljo on, the funk and the manimal, together. Uh, 
What do you I, think? That might be too much to handle. <laughs> too That's much. a lot in one room. <laughs> yeah. You. What do you think, Jesse? Yeah. Let's, think? let's just. Who would be a good? I tell you what. Aljo tries not to. I see it. He tries not to crack up. Yeah. But I fucking crack him up sometimes. You get him? It's tough. It's tough. Who's the funniest guy at the gym at Low MMA? Who's I mean, Sarah's really funny. Uh, Ray's funny, but in a different like he's like dry a little bit sometimes, and he likes to buzz balls. Ray's funny as a ball buster. Who's the funniest guy? I mean, I'm pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna take the crown for that? No, I can't take the crown. I mean, I feel like Sarah cracks the most guys up. Yeah, so Sarah's the guy. We should take some some calls for the last 15 minutes. I do want to do that. Yeah, we only have 15 minutes left in this. What we're going to do is this. Let's run through just briefly just headline of the story. Boom, 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 uh, boom. All right, we'll Dana White's targeting October for the launch of the Zufa Boxing. One, we heard him one, tease one, it a couple times uh, over the last uh, six years. He's been uh, taunting boxing. Now Zufa's going to be taking over boxing, and he's, he's targeting October for that. I have a funny story about Volante, but uh, we'll, go, we'll go into that in a second. Uh, Holly Holm is set to face with Kyle Pennington at UFC 243. So make sure you guys take keep I'm an eye out. I'm she has such a quick turnaround time. You know what's, what's weird about it? I think Holly it? Holm should take some time off personally. Really? think so, huh? She just got fucking knocked out. You got to take at least six months, eight months. Well, it's funny you mentioned knockout because this is going to be at the same venue that she knocked out Ronda Rousey. She's coming back to that place to, to fight Raquel Pen- Pennington. When was her fight? When was her last fight? When did she just get knocked out by Nunez? It was recently. It was recent. What? And then she's fighting <sighs> when? November? Let's look. You want to call it June, July, August, September, October, November. That's six months. Yeah. I don't like it. No, no good, huh? I don't like it. She's an older fighter. I yeah, don't like it. Yeah, she's not getting any younger. She's 35, sure. 36. Well, she's, she's got that divorce, so she's trying to keep herself you busy. You need too. time. Hey, you need time to heal from a knockout. She got flattened. Let's see. Yeah, that was uh, 7 6. Yeah. Shit. July. God damn. July. All right, so let's do this. July, August, September, October, November. Five months. I think it's too soon. I think so. Personally, I'm not saying she's not going to beat Raquel Pennington. Even if she beats her, I don't know. I think take two extra months. What's the big fucking deal? Yeah. Mm. I think people rush. Did you see what I put up today? Augustus's quote, make haste slowly. The first Roman emperor. And I agree. Make haste slowly. Like Do it the right timing. Don't be in such a rush. If you want to see more of those posts, it's John the Manimal. Well, I have a master's in history, so I try to use it. Yeah, Beneduce. There it is. A Beneduce. Can you have gotten a, a a shorter name than this? I mean, Jesus Christ! It's it's like it's like a paragraph. Is this, this this name over here? What's going on here? This Ooh, me, John the Manimal Beneduce. Look at this. Is a long ass Instagram name here. How are they gonna find this? That's long, you think? Yeah, guys. John the Manimal Beneduce. Go follow him on IG, and you can check out his quotes and all this stuff over here and his uploads and. Shout out from the MMA holes. All right, let's get back into another story over here. We'll move on to uh, chaos. Dana White says that he's giving Colby Covington the next title shot, and Jorge Masvidal will be offered a new opponent that has not been announced yet. So everyone who was on board with Masvidal getting that title shot, unfortunately, you're not in luck uh, because Covington will be receiving that next title shot. You, you know what the UFC should do? They should make, like, you know how you said interim belts? Yeah. Don't make an interim belt. Remember pro wrestling? They would have an intercontinental championship <laughs> and then a world championship. <laughs> they should do that. They They're probably not far off from that. I mean, like if you, so, so Masvidal could fight someone like Leon Edwards for the interim title. It's not an interim title. Then you call the intercontinental title. Yeah, fuck it. And right? then you have Covington and Usman fight for the world title. <laughs> I think we're and going in that have, direction. Uh, the, Super the Intercontinental champ fight the world champ to unify the titles. Man, I'm a lizard. Like they cool do in dude, boxing. Don't mess with New York. Uh, Life and Logic says you're a cool dude. Don't mess with New York. So look at that. You're getting uh, people are loving He's you. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <Yeah, he got laughs> Tell me something love I don't first. know. First, spread love. That's the Brooklyn way. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what Biggie says. Came yeah. out to Biggie at the fight. Oh, is that, that what good. you walked out to? Came out to victory by Biggie. Yeah, it was dope. That's you pretty know? cool. What, wow. would, what would be my walkout song? My first, like, Ami walkout song. ABBA. What? Dancing Queen. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jesus. I want something like Slipknot, you know? Yeah, like what do you think about, like, a music hardcore. that's, like, s- like slow or fast-paced music? Some people say they like to walk out to something slow because it, it brings their heart rate down, and other people are just like, bam, they, like, really want, walk like, out something Slipknot crazy. Shit. Depends on the fighter. Yeah. yeah like Every fight is shit. different. That's what I love about fighting. Yeah. There's no script for, mm. the, for the fighters himself. So like other and even for like body types and and um, attributes like if you think about football if you're a lineman you look a certain way yeah mm-hmm. yeah you have to be big strong right th- th- thick probably yeah. if you're a fighter all right you don't have to look anyway 
you can look any way you want and make that work for you. So that's why I love martial arts because hmm. it's one of the few things that you don't have to fit a mold to excel at. Yeah. Yeah. It's the most natural. Well, not the most natural thing for humans, but one of the most natural things. Yeah. I mean, I guess after like eating and banging, fighting was the third thing you did. That's why I think it's such an amazing sport. You know, mixed martial arts. Like, I, I feel that anyone can relate to it. You know, not everyone can fight, but everyone has been in some sort of fight in their life where they, they feel like they can just relate to it. Not everyone can throw a 90 mile per hour fastball or or hit a puck into a net or kick a field goal or do any of that stuff. But fighting, it seems like everyone has had a fight. Not like they can get into the octagon or anything like that, but they can relate in some sort of way. Right. So I feel like it's the most relatable sport. for, And, and that's why I feel it's like it's growing so fast, you know. Mm. What do you think of it well, as a, a, I don't even know if it's just everyone's had a fight. Like there's a lot of people who've never been in a fight but just have that in that like maybe it's like an inner emotion or inner anger or That's the thing. Like that. Not not a, it doesn't even have to be a physical fight. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, many ways to say fight, you know? Yeah. And and it's just just watching a person go in a cage and try to fend for their, you know, to to make money for their family, put food on the table. I mean, there's something that's so uh <laughs> That <laughs> <laughs> we lost the animal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of something. Wait, I was, what I was just thinking of something when you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put money on the table. Yeah, for food for the family. Like your kids are starving, right? Oh, wait, I wish fucking Mark Lamonica was watching this. Your poor wife. Do you know you Mark Lamonica, the writer for Newsday? No. Uh, sounds familiar. So he writes about MMA for Newsday. Okay. He interviews me after my Bellator fight. <laughs> I'm trying to tell him this epic story about. How I lost my first one back okay. and after 10 years and, you know, coming back from all these injuries and making it back and winning at the garden and how, you know, it's a lifelong dream that I never thought it would be fulfilled. And uh, then I said something about how, like, I don't need, you know, I do it for love, the pure love of the game because I love to fight and I've done all different types of martial arts and competed in them. And uh, what does he write? That my wife has a good job. I think I had said it. I what? was like, so I was like, you know, I don't even need to fight. My wife has a good job. I'm yeah. not like struggling. And he's like, and that's what he quotes. And I was like, dude, that's the all quote. the other shit. That's what you quote. <laughs> so my wife got shit about it at work. She's like, oh, <laughs> you're okay. You have a good job. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? That's what you quote. That I is a bizarre trying. thing to, to pull I'm out like, of that story. Really? So hopefully he's listening. That son Tackle of a bitch. Him, motherfuckers. Wow. Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell. I haven't seen him yet. I'm like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, I appreciate you interviewing me, but, you know, come on. That's like, what are the, why pull that quote? Fucking, Ma Manimal's on fire tonight. <laughs> Absolute fire. All right, a couple more stories over here, and, and we're running out of time here. We just only got six minutes. Lines. We got five, five minutes left. You might just left. open the phone lines? Yeah, I mean, we only have right. five minutes left. You might as well get as many as you can. All right, here's the deal. Guys, if you want to check the stories, go over to the MMAholes.com. We have them all over there. Um, on our community section, so check it out, themmaholes.com. By the way, before we open up the phone lines, we have a thing called the Hottest Holes, and each month we get a winner of the hottest female MMA <laughs> fighter. And this month we have Megan Anderson. <laughs> Megan Anderson. My dick. <laughs> is your dick hanging out? What? <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> what does it got going on back there? I'm laughing at myself. All right. Any, any nip slips, cocks hanging out yeah, or anything? All yeah, right. just a little bit. One anyway, who, who do you feel hottest hole? Megan Anderson, Mackenzie Dern. Who would you say is the hotter of the two? Between Megan Anderson and Mackenzie Dern? Mackenzie Dern, Megan Anderson. Yeah, what, what would you think? Who would you go with? Shit. Scroll down a little. Okay, we got some more pictures. We got Scroll down a little bit. Right, that's it. That's all we got over here on the that's hottest holes. The fuck? Yeah, just three pictures you get to choose I mean, from. Mackenzie Dern is a fat ass. Yeah. Well, in fairness, look at the pose. She's she's kind of like perking the angle. Out no, no, but she has a fat ass. She does. She Megan does. Anderson's tall, and I love banging a tall girl. So that always has to come into play. And she's got a cute face. Well, they both do. I like a tats too, Megan Anderson. All right, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Okay. I'd bang Megan Anderson. Yes! Megan Anderson. Yes. I told you. All right, all right. Right now, Mackenzie. And I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, go for it. I just think she'd be a better lay. Ah. Uh, I, I bet you. I just. You think Mackenzie Dern just lays there and just like I'm I'm hot with fat ass and you know just with her fake it. accent. Yeah, her fake pork, fake Portuguese accent. Anyway, all right, let's open up the phone lines. Let's let the people talk. Yeah, I could see her just being right. a pillow princess. 
Yeah. Pillow Mackenzie princess. Did. You never heard that before? Yeah. I think I have. I've just never. Pillow princess uh, girl just lays her on a pillow. A pillow princess. Yeah, she doesn't do anything. <laughs> she just lays okay. her and gets fucked. You guys know the number in the chat, 516-522-0267. for the MMA holes? Oh, it's, it, this is such is a... Is this perfect for you? It's Actually, a PG channel. I was going to say, this is... Uh, t- I think tonight's show is probably more PG than usual. Oh, really? I could I could turn it up to like... Uh, it, gets, t- it gets listen, pretty crazy Listen, we see some horrible over things over here. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. 516-522-0267. Call in the Manimal. We're going to take a couple of calls. Get them in quick. They're all scurrying to the phones now. Ready for Kevin? Uh, does Kevin call first? Of what do you course think? he will. What do you think? <laughs> We haven't seen what's going on in that chat over there. Hopefully the chat is wonderful, wonderful. Oh, they're all calling in. Jesse, they're all over the place. All right, here we go. 405, you're live with the MMA holes. Yeah, what's your name and what's on your mind? What's up, my niggas? What's up, my ninja? Oh, shit. Where Chrome, are you from? What's going on? Who we got here? It's Chrome Team motherfucking Dome, my nigga. What's, <laughs> what's going on, Chrome? What's on your mind? Oh, nothing much. I got in. Fuck that nigga KFC. Oh, shit. I'm in this motherfucker. He can <laughs> suck my dick. Damn, son. All right, you tell me. You, you speak, preach. Do you have a question? <laughs> oh yeah, Moss. I didn't get to call in Monday. I think you lost your fucking mind. Okay. On fucking Kobe Covington in the fake fight, boy. Are you talking about the fake fight? Yes. You okay. think it's fake or you don't? Oh. Uh, you what think does he it's say? fixed or not? Hell no, it ain't fixed. I don't think Moss so either. Lost. But I've heard people say it. And we and I he thought it was an anomaly, but I someone asked me that also, if we thought the fight was fixed. I thought I was like, look at his performance against Rafael dos Anjos, a very similar performance where he kind of got overwhelmed. So I was like, based on that previous performance, like that would be my evidence to say that he just got outstruck. What do you think, Rom? Um, I just think Robbie's an, he's old. He's old. He's done. He was moving slow. Yeah. He was he's waiting for an opening and never came. He's, he's now lost with five of his last six fights. Yeah. But it wasn't fixed. Robbie's just not as good as he once was. Okay. It's fair enough. Fair point over there. Any questions for the Manimal? For the Manimal. You know, I just think he looks like Glenn Robinson. That's all I think. Who's all that? Right. Glenn Robinson. Former owner of the Black Zillions. Oh, oh are you the... yeah. I got that a couple <laughs> times, actually. <laughs> All right, Chrome. Thanks Can for the call, man. You hear him laughing on there. the other side. <laughs> this fucking guy. All right, five one six five two two zero two six seven. Call. Hey, up. listen. It's better than when they tell me I look like the Sicilian from uh, Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> you got that before? Oh, dude, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Jesse gets a porn star. What's the porn star you get? I can't remember her name. They'll know in the chat. Tell me. I'll look her up. <laughs> it's uh, guys. They they'll tell you. I, I can't I'm remember not sure. her name. Call in five one six. Let me know. Here we go. Get this one. Unknown caller, you're live with the MMA holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? Hello. You there? It's DB Cooper. What's up, DB? Yo. What's going on? I don't even know what I have to say, but I'm gonna have to say that Robbie, even though he's old, uh, can still throw a fucking punch. Can we agree on that at least? I mean, yeah, he's 37 years old, but fucking George Foreman knocked out Mora when he was like 40 something. I'm 39. I mean, he, yeah. he can no <laughs> longer he can no longer throw punches. Hmm. I think he I think he has a tendency to when he's getting hit, like he does he waits for an opening then throws, but there was no opening. And he was just waiting and waiting and waiting forever. All right. Well, he, what about what about when he fought uh fought Ben Askren, dude? Right, that he didn't look like a fucking absolute manimal. No, no oh, he looked like a monster in that, in that fight. fight. Right, he picked him up, fucking threw him. Yeah, and then he threw about a thousand punches at him. He couldn't That's have thrown true. at least one of those fucking shots at How, Kobe. Let me ask you this: How many punches did Askren throw at Lola? Yeah, but to be to be fair, it it started right. They were both they were both uh, you know they were both totally fine. They hadn't thrown punches at each other just yet, right? I mean, after the first round, I know, like, I used to wrestle. I understand that fucking wrestling makes you tired as shit. Makes him tired. I think that, too. After the first round, I think he was tired as shit also. Then he was dodging, waiting for openings. He was breathing. And Colby Covington hit him like 500 times. He's like, bang. He was hitting him with these little shots. I almost wish he would just knock me the fuck out. Hit me 500 times. I hate you. Like, that's just. He was just like, bink, bink, (laughs) bink, bink, bink. Like, nickel and diamond him to death. It's like well, a, th- it's the, like a thousand paper thing, cuts. I mean, like, there was times where he could have let go at least one or two fucking Actually, big ones. 
I mean, every time he actually hey, well, you did know what? touch he him, did... it looked like he hit him at about 50% and hurt Kobe, you know? There was a weird part of the fight. I mean, dude, hold was... on, DB, hold on one second. There was a weird part of the okay. fight where where uh, Lola was kind of walking forward, and he just had his hands down and was just letting Kobe hit him. And we, exactly. couldn't, we couldn't figure out what was going on there. We are like... Why is he just walking into him and not even like... What about the fifth round where it was, he just bobbed and weaved for the entire time? If you can bob and weave, you can throw a fucking punch, Meng. Meng? What? Meng. <laughs> sure, Meng. Well, all right. Well, <laughs> we, we are split up here, but you're saying, DB, you're saying that um, you think it was fixed, correct? I just think that something was funny. I'm not saying it was fixed, okay. man. I, I don't like You think the he was fixed. sick of some shit if it wasn't fixed? But I just don't understand. I Robbie don't understand had the flu. Dude. Listen, I've been watching Robbie since he was fucking 19 years old, dude. Like, I've seen him take a beat, and I've seen him get knocked out by Nick Diaz with a fucking jab. I mean, I know that he's not infallible, but shit, dude, this is a guy that throws punches. That's what the fuck he's known for is hurting people. He can't throw one punch with, like, bad intent. Mm. I mean, not one. All right, well. Fuck, man, I could have thrown one punch with bad intentions, and I'm a fucking fat guy. <laughs> you might not have landed, but you would have thrown it, hopefully. I would have thrown it so hot that it would have took the rest of fucking John Anik's hair right the fuck off. <laughs> All right, DV, thanks for the call. Thanks for the call. Uh, you know what's funny? My first fight back after 10 years, that's what yeah. I was worried about. Was that? The rest Am I going to be able Anik's to throw hair. a punch? Really? Was it really? Yeah, I was nervous. Oh, man. I was like, oh, shit. Am I going to even be able to throw? Because you haven't. You must have been shitting your pants, man. Getting back in there. That, that long for, And that kid I fought was fucking tough, too. Dude, I watched it. Like, actually, when I think about it now, I was like, man, I did good in that fight. Considering he just flatlined some dude in that LFA show. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man. I was like, all right. I, I did all right. And I was like, un, you know. Whatever, I learned a lot. There you go. We're with the Manimal right now. We're going to take one more call. Yay! And uh, we're going to wind this down. Get a good question, good whatever, comments, uh, call in. 516-522-0267. Let us know your thoughts. But, um, yeah, they're, they're very passionate. We did a whole show just on one topic. I couldn't even believe it. Two hours, right? What was it, two and a half hours? What? About Colby Covington and Robbie Lawler. I couldn't believe it. Here we, oh, you're going to love this one. All right, here's a sweetheart. It's the Knitter! NH, what's up? Hey, what's up? Chris and Jesse, an animal. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and what's on your mind? It's the knitter. <laughs> hey, I just want to say, an animal's awesome. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, Ann, you you're awesome, new fan. too. New fan. Yeah, Ann. New fan, yeah. Ann, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> if you like, do you like the gram, Ann? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, yes. Uh, I mean, that's my favorite. I'll find you. You're going to so, send uh, a... He says Twitter, my name's too but... long, John the Manimal. Yeah, it's very long, very long. <laughs> you know, it's and long, but you know what? It's worth it. And you're going to send nudes <laughs> to the Manimal or no? Uh, am I going to send nudes to the Manimal? Yeah. Come on, be honest. Be honest with us. <laughs> Uh, no, but I'll send the hat picture. You know, she's very cool happily hat. married. Oh, oh, how okay. dare you! I'm ask happily questions. married, also. Yeah. Yeah. How's your husband look? Yeah, he's happily married. I'm <laughs> happily married too. What are you talking about? I said I'm happily married, also. <laughs> How's your husband look? Years. I'm going on eleven in October. Wow, eleven That's years. Good. That's I believe cool. in commitment. That's great. Damn. That's, That's pretty right. good. Like Congratulations. Like a mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> Rare oh, nowadays. <laughs> so, Anne, what's going on? What's on your mind? I just want to say, hey, great show tonight. This guy is funnier than shit, man. Thank you. <laughs> you guys hey. are always great anyway. I just love it. And thank love you. Love the accent. <laughs> hey, I'm from Brooklyn. When you, had DB, when you had DB on there, man, you yeah. got you. It's like, whoa. He's oh, it's New York going overload. <laughs> well, yeah, he, DB's uh, from Massachusetts, right? So that's close enough. For sure. <laughs> Boston. Yeah. All right, ah. and, and thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Thank you, right. Thank you guys. Love you, Ann. All right. Should we take Thanks, one more? What do you all think? right, one more, and then you got we'll one cut more in you? off. One more call? Bro, I could go all fucking <laughs> All right. Yo, Five, I, one, six. I mean, if I didn't have to wake up at four in the morning, <laughs> I would do this shit for like two more hours. Yeah. It's, I just it's, keep smoking and drinking until I stop. I don't stop. Yeah. I, I, I mean, but I do have to we wake up early. We got to cut him off. He's got to wake up at 4.30 <laughs> in the morning. Hard cut, hard cut. Yeah, I got right. No, four. If we four. got one more call. All right, this will be the last call of the last night over call. here. Let's do it, guys. Here we go. Unknown caller, you're live with the MMA holes. What's your name and what's on your mind? Yo, yo, it's Drunk Savage. Yo, yo, it's Drunk Savage. Drunk, what's up, man? Not much. So, John, you going to take JBH to the top, make her champion? There's only one person that could take it to the top herself. But... I'll do everything I can to make that to help, to help that happen. So yeah, I mean, if she wants to train and show up, listen, it's a process, it's a road, 
And uh, I'm down. I mean, shit. I when someone tells me their dreams, the only thing I say is yes. I just want to see them achieve their dreams. He's an awesome coach. And I'll try to do anything to help. And usually, what happens is most people fall short on themselves. So we have to see how it works out. But I'd love to see JBH fucking kick ass. He at least get one amateur fight. It would be fun for her to get one amateur fight. I think that'd be hilarious. I think it'd be a good goal. Yeah, just to train for a year, train for a full year, do everything right. And do like an amateur fight at Triton. Yeah. It'll be fun. We'll get you the right opponent. We got to get a can. We got to get a... Uh, I don't need right? a can. Yeah, we got to do it. We got to lay... We gotta, I, I don't we gotta need a can. You it always want... No, no, no. You want a fair matchup. Yeah. Always no, get a fair matchup. Serious. I want, I want the worst. I want a one-armed woman, maybe one leg, too. That's because you don't want to see me inside the cage. <laughs> <laughs> we, we spoke to the My promoter. wife said it's tough to watch me fight. Yeah. That's what he was saying. He doesn't Well, because I got oh, fucked up before, me. too. Like, when you get fucked up, it's like, yo, it's the fortunes of warfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm fighting good quality opponents. Were you in the gym for um uh, the Bagel Boss when he was there? No. You weren't? Oh, you missed that gem of a... I could have missed that gem. <laughs> I'm, I don't, I'm not a Bagel Boss fan. No, you know, he doesn't do it for Well, you. I'll tell you what. Let me let me back that up. I can't say I'm not a fan. I'm a nada nada. I'm nada on that. I yeah. don't know. You'll pass. I'm pass. I that's, want JBH to fight the Bagel Boss. That's a hard boss. pass for me. <laughs> I think JBH could kick the Bagel Boss's ass. Because he's, he's 4'11", like, right? He's like... Yeah, I think that should happen. Call yeah. Why don't you do her. that? Put it together. <laughs> we gotta, we could, she could be the first intergender champion. Oh, my God. Train yeah. rolling. Phone's been busy. Uh, Kevin, this is the last call, but we will take your call on the next time we are alive. Oh, let's take one more. All right. You want to take one more? Kaufman, I'll take one more. JBH. What's up, right. Andy Kaufman, I like that he knows the reference. Thank you, Drunk Savage. Oh, I like Moss, that you know the reference. Good. What do you got, Drunk? I think uh, Cyborg knew about the fucking subtitles and shit. This was all a plot to get out of the UFC and still look like a victim. Huh. Ooh, I so, like that theory. Right. An easy, smooth, slick way out. I like that theory. Yeah, yeah I like that theory. Still that, got the sympathy. You know what? That actually makes sense. That actually makes sense because um, you would think she would proof you her video before she airs it, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I would think so. I know I would. Maybe, maybe, yeah, really? maybe that's the case. All right, drunk. Thanks for the call, man. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. To do one more. The, ma- the animal wants one more. Yeah, I have good stamina, bro. I'm a professional <laughs> athlete. He's got that bedroom stamina like Kobe. Like Kobe. Me and Kobe have the same favorite cardio. Build my stamina <laughs> in the bedroom. You know, sometimes right. the guys think I'm a little lackluster in training, but they don't realize what I was doing the night before. What do you think? Jiu-jitsu? <laughs> wrestling? Where, what, what, is the, what is the superior? A lot of people argue about that. Uh, it's not a superior art. Here we no go. No superior art. This All right, here we go. This Kevin... Is- from Chicago. All right, Kevin, what do you got? Shy town I made it. All right, I got to squash some beef real quick because you said I didn't know what I was talking about. All right, listen up. I'm a state champion wrestler. State champion. Matthew is a <laughs> state champion wrestler from Illinois. The same state I'm from. Uh, Clay Guida, a state champion wrestler from Illinois. <sighs> what's he talking um, about? What was the question? Oh, no. What, uh, so what what's was on the your thing mind? that we I said? Earlier in the show, he was giving me shit, saying I didn't know what I was talking about because I never stepped how many, in the ring. How many Bellator anything. and UFC fights do you have? No, I what never fight were we talking cage. about? What what fight were you no, talking I was, about? I was busting his balls. I was busting uh, oh, Kevin's yeah, balls. I was like, yeah. were we talking about a fight? <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm just busting his balls. Oh, you're busting his balls. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, say your resume. my point. Yeah. My point is, you don't have to fight in the cage to know what you're talking about. I grew up wrestling, and I went to, I've trained with... Michael Chandler and Tywin Woodley oh, in man. Edwardsville, Illinois, for a wrestling camp. <laughs> Tell I've me a fucking story. Is there a point to the story? Do you have a moral to this <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. story? <laughs> Wrap it up, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Wrap it up. I want to take another fucking call. You ruined it for me. Relax, man. Wrap it up. Relax. So on. look at the New York, New York fighters. You got Gregor Gillespie, Eljamay Sterling, Chris Weidman, Eli Quinta, uh, Dennis Bermudez. Um, Chris Wade, what's what do they all have in common? You tell us. They got the wrestling. They all come from wrestling backgrounds. Uh, Stipe Miocic, Daniel Cormier, Kamara okay. Usman, Colby Covington, Henry Cejudo. Oh my God! Joseph all right, so what is your point? What's okay. your point? Wrap it up, B. Wrap it up, B. Madoff. Wrap it up, B. Wrestling background. Yeah. yeah okay. But, wrestling's hey, my second good. point is Colby okay. Covington. Real quick, Colby Covington. He called into. The uh, Sirius XM radio show, and he went off on Misha Tate and RJ Clifford. He called them out because, uh, what's it called? Misha Tate was getting on her high horse and, oh, I didn't like those comments. And well, she is he, a cunt. He should handle himself better. And Kobe went out and said, 
yeah, you you're um you release photos to get famous. You pretty much you show your ass to be famous. And uh, say what is his sure, name? I RJ wish I could show said, my ass to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> if you RJ have that Cooper option, said, you're always never take it. back on the show again. Yeah. He said uh, he snapped on him. Yeah. And, and I agree with Kobe. All these people get on their high horse. Oh, he shouldn't have said that about Matt Hughes and blah, blah, blah. And he went off on him. I okay. agree 100%. Thank you. And Thank you. Sir. All right, all right. Yeah, I got to hang up on <laughs> Here's Vlad with a donation. Hold on. Yeah. Hello. Yo, can you give Put a donation for taking up that time in my life? <laughs> He's undefeated. Zero and zero in the octagon. <laughs> Fucking <it. laughs> Fuck Vlad. He's Thank undefeated. <laughs> 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 he's undefeated. Oh, we know. Uh, Kevin's oh, funny. Know. This guy calls in. He's fight. He calls in all the shows. He calls in Luke Tom. Oh, he calls in everyone. You know, no, I have right, to go get for a better last call. Yeah. All right. Listen. All right, guys. That was fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to wind this thing down. We're going to have last words from the Manimal. Um, how can we find you? Instagram, uh, the gym, what you're doing, what's in the future. This is the time to go for it. Guys, the easiest way to find me on Instagram at John. The Manimal Beneducci. Yeah, it's long, but you know what? Have a little stamina. Type it out, okay? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I got my training camp coming up. That's open to the public September 21st and 22nd. Uh, I think I'm all sold out of the VIP spots, but I got some single days and uh, two day no stays. But uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. We go upstate New York. We do all different types of training: kickboxing, boxing. Uh, a little bit of jujitsu. We lift weights. We do an assessment where I assess everyone's fitness levels. Then I give everyone a program to follow afterwards. We got a cold plunge up there, a hot tub. So that's a good time. So I'm gearing up for that. And then after that, we'll see what the universe wants me to do as far as uh, battle goes. That's right. And also check out the MMA and Beyond podcast MMA with and him. Beyond, and me and Ray Longo and Steve Maraboli. Steve Maraboli actually is the most quoted man in the world, apparently. Um so yeah, that's a fun podcast. We do that every Sunday, every Monday morning. It comes out on iTunes uh, at MMA and Beyond. That's a lot of fun, and uh, that's how we met you guys. And sometimes we get guests, uh, but not often as cool as the two of you. Oh, I'm blushing. Look at that. I'm blushing. Listen, it was a pleasure to have you on, John. It really you was guys, a pleasure. You're awesome. And uh, I like that my wife called in too. Uh, uh, typed in. <laughs> that really made me happy, actually. Yeah, that was awesome. That, that was really cool. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure. And Jesse, say those final words. Let's get All out right. of here. Don't be an a hole. Be an M M A hole.